Monster Synthesis Master. 41 Chapter 41 Unlock, Erudite. Link walked out of the nutrient pool naked. Looking back, the orange nutrient solution had turned muddy and had become a pool of black sewage. It was even emitting a foul smell. Lin Kei went to the bathroom and took a shower. He looked at himself in the mirror and found that he could not recognize himself. The first was his height. Due to years of fatigue and malnutrition, Link was only about 1.6 meters tall. But now, in the mirror, he was at least 1.7 meters tall. His thin and shriveled body was now full of muscles, and the well-defined muscle lines could be seen. Link tried to jump on the spot. His body was indescribably light. Phew, it's finally back to normal. Link dried himself and came out of the bathroom. He changed into the fitting clothes that he had prepared in advance. The only regret was that he could only put the submachine gun on the back of his waist after he put it on again. Link then allocated the 18 free attribute points to his 6 attributes. He had completed the prerequisite of unlocking the general attributes, which was to have all attributes reach 10 points. Link looked at himself in the mirror. She was dressed in a silver-gray casual suit with the buttons of her white shirt unbuttoned, revealing her fair and delicate neck and her collarbones. His short hair looked a little messy, but when matched with his formal suit, he looked a little unruly. Link stood at the side and measured himself. He was now 175 centimeters tall and weighed 65 kilograms. He touched his soft jawline and looked at himself in the mirror for a while. He couldn't help but sigh. These nine points of charm weren't for nothing. This damn charm. If it was the old Link, he would definitely blend in with the people of the slums. But now, with her outstanding figure and proportion, coupled with her extraordinary appearance and temperament, she would definitely attract people to turn their heads when she walked on the road. After packing up, Link had just stepped out of the room when the long-legged beauty came up to him with a smile. Hello, Mr. Lin. Congratulations on your successful genetic repair and finding your true self. Take a look. This staff member of theirs was good-looking and had a good way of speaking. Mr. Lin, can we save the data of your body just now and use it as a database for research? No problem, he said. I'll have to trouble you to fill in your contact information and address here so that we can follow you up in the future. If you feel any discomfort, you can also call our company's number according to the business card. We'll be waiting for you at any time. Lin K wrote down his phone number and the address of the Jack Gang and took the card. The business card was simple and elegant, with only three lines of information written on the pure white front. The first line was the name of the joint pharmaceutical. The second line was a landline number. The third line was the address. On the back of the business card, there was only one line of words technology changes the world, we change the future. Lin Kei put the card in his pocket and nodded at the long-legged beauty before walking towards the lobby. Fu lowered his head and stared at his feet. Although he was already the brother Fu loved by everyone in the Jack Gang, when he came to this rich and magnificent place, he subconsciously had the thoughts of a small farmer. He lowered his head like a quail and did not even dare to look at the free long legs. Fu, let's go. It's time to go to the next place. Link walked up to Afu and called out. Fu raised her head and saw a stranger. She immediately looked bewildered. The treasure hunting mouse stood on Afu's knees. When it looked up, its favorite melon seeds had fallen to the ground. It opened its mouth, revealing two front teeth and stared blankly at Link. It was a little confused. Why did its master come out like a different person after less than half an hour? Fortunately, it still had a nose. It sniffed, and it still had a familiar smell. Your Ying Luo. Fu's face was full of vigilance, and his brows were slightly furrowed. The person in front of him was somewhat familiar, but also somewhat unfamiliar. Just as the treasure hunting mouse was about to jump onto Link, Fu quickly grabbed its tail and pulled it back. I just went in and took the gene repair fluid, and my body recovered that's why I've grown taller, and my body has also recovered. Fu was still suspicious. 
After all, he had never seen such a drastic change in life before. You hid in the trunk of the desert jeep, escaped from the Wasteland Gang's slave camp, and we even crossed the Goria Grand Canal together. We even defeated five machinery faith fanatics at the Howl Castle, and ran ran. Fu immediately stood up, his eyes shining. Enough, enough. You're really the boss. This was something that Fu and Link had experienced together. No one else knew. Furthermore, after taking a closer look at the facial features of the fair and handsome man in front of him, Ah Fu could see the shadow of his boss from before. Taking advantage of the moment Ah Fu let go, the treasure-seeking mouse scurried onto Link. She sniffed at Link's shoulder and slipped into his suit pocket. Oh, so warm, so satisfied. Fu was surprised and couldn't help but ask, Boss, this gene repair fluid is so magical. It's like you've changed into a different person in an instant. Of course, it's 200,000 yuan each. Hearing the price, Ah Fu's legs turned to jelly. Dumbfounded, he raised two fingers and said, TT 200,000. Don't worry, said Link, patting Ah Fu's shoulder, you can come and do it when we get the money. Fu shook his head repeatedly when he heard this, his head moving like a rattle. No, it's too expensive. I can't bear to. No, no. Your stomach was stuffed with so much sand in the past. If you don't use the gene repair fluid to clean it up, I'm afraid you won't live for long. You're my servant now, and you can't decide how long you want to live. Since boss had already said so, Afu naturally had no reason to refute. However, he could not stop thinking about how many coffins he had to carry to earn back the 200000 yuan potion. Now that his attributes had reached the standard, the next step was to unlock the general system. After coming out of the joint pharmaceutical production team, Lin Kei instantly looked like a proper human. As soon as he got into the Will-O-Wisp V8, there were even beautiful women throwing flirtatious looks at him across the road. Link did not want to be outdone. He stepped on the gas and sped away. Boss, did the woman in front of us have a hidden disease in her eyes? I saw her eyes blinking non-stop, and her face was twitching. Fu asked in all seriousness. N, that's right, if you see this kind of person in the future, you must stay far away from them, lest you get infected. Why else do you think I drive so fast? The journey was as fast as lightning. Without the glass, the Will-O-Wisp V8 and Link's new image were still very eye-catching. In less than ten minutes, Link arrived at the second destination. Fu, let's go. Fu got out of the car and looked up at the huge building in front of him. This place was different from the building just now. The temperament was different, but the magnificence was the same. The door was supported by eight huge stone pillars, and there was a dense staircase leading up. There was even a strange-looking fist sculpture on it. It looked like the mountain gate of some gang. Boss, is this the mountain gate of some big gang? It looks so magnificent. Link was dumbfounded. He didn't understand why Afu would think this way. This is the city library. Ah? Then why was there a fist statue in the library? I thought that fists represented power. Link was speechless. The fist sculpture means that knowledge represents power, he said. Oh. The Sand City Library was Link's second stop on this trip. It was also the place where he could unlock his identity as a professor. Link and Afu climbed up the steps. Afu was panting when he reached the end. 365 steps, don't ask him how he knew. When he passed by the huge fist sculpture, Fu took a closer look and found that the fist was densely written with various famous quotes. For example, The Swan and I. Monster Synthesis Master is a good book. Zhuan Jun. If the end of the world only allowed one book to be taken away, then I'll choose why is it the celestial circle again. Zhuan Jun. There were many similar comments, but Fu didn't read them in detail. She only felt that Zhu Wan Jun's words made sense. He followed his boss into the library. Did it?
As soon as Link entered the library, an alarm sounded from the electronic door. Hello, sir. Please take out your metal items and store them. Lighters and dangerous metal products are not allowed in the library. Afu, sit on the long bench and wait for me. If you're hungry, go to the fast food truck at the entrance of the library and buy some food. I'll be out in about two to three hours. Link took off his jacket and took out the holster. There were muffled pistols, submachine guns, and revolvers on top of it, as well as army ants hiding in the iron box of the gun strap, pretending to be dead. The staff of the library was used to this. After all, there was no lack of firearms in the Sand City. After handing the item to Fu, Link walked through the safety door again. But this time, the security guard stopped him again. Sir, may I ask what's in your shirt pocket, is it convenient for you to take it out? Oh, you're talking about this, right? I can't bring it in too. When Link took out the treasure hunting mouse, the female staff's eyes lit up. They were amazed by its cuteness. I'm sorry, sir. In order to ensure that the books are intact and not damaged, rodents are not allowed to be brought into the library. Please understand. Link expressed his understanding and handed the treasure hunting mouse to Fu. He then turned and entered the library. He had wasted some time at the door, but he had to hurry up next. Link went to the library's general area and looked around, as if he was looking for someone. When he passed through the bookshelves, he suddenly stopped and found the figure he had been looking for. Link took a deep breath. He was slightly nervous. He had never done this in his previous life and had only read about it on the forums. I hope it works. May I ask if you know where the book Research on Basic Poison Theory is, asked Link as he quickly walked up to her. The white-haired old man who was sweeping the floor looked up at Link and said slowly, Common Area, Row 31, Bookshelf B, Level 3, From Left to Right, 59th Book. Many thanks. Link didn't stop. He quickly found the basic theory of poison according to the old man's words and sat down to study it. You are reading basic theory of poison. Progress 0.5% 1% 20 minutes later. Your basic theory of poison research has reached 100% comprehension. You have activated the specialty poison preparation LV1 and learned the skill poison throwing LV1. Poisoning LVL1 poishes the target. The effect depends on the poison, 80% chance of being seen through. Cost, 5 stamina slash time. Poison concoction level 1, poison effect plus 5%, duration plus 5%, target resistance 5%. Link put away the book and returned it to its original position. He then walked back to the cleaner. The library was the place where future players could choose their classes and learn skills. In the game, there were two ways to activate a class. One was to study related theories, which would be activated after reading a book. The other was taught by an NPC. Books were also divided into two types. One of them was the class knowledge book, and the other was the general knowledge book. Class knowledge books, as the name suggested were books that corresponded to the four major classes. Among them, the corresponding primary research theoretical knowledge would activate the related class after reading it. The general knowledge book, literally, meant that all systems could be learned, and most of it was supplementary content. The basic theory of poison that Link had just read was one of the general knowledge books. The old man who was cleaning the library with a broom was the librarian. He had another name in the player's mouth's library guide. If she wanted to find a book, she could just ask him and she would get the answer. Sir, do you know where the book The Origin and Development of Divination is? The white-haired old man who was sweeping the floor looked up at Link again and said, Oh, I didn't expect you to learn so fast. The book you are looking for is on the twelfth row of the common area, the fifth floor of bookshelf C, the third book from the right to the left. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I'll give you another suggestion. This book is placed a little high, 
so you can go to the window and get a ladder first. Link's eyes gleamed as he turned around. There was hope. He had been to the library before, but this librarian would only answer the location of the books each time. He would never say anything unnecessary. However, this time, she surprisingly spoke a few more words to him. Link moved the ladder over and found the origin and development of divination. He continued reading. Thirty minutes later. Your the origin and development of divination has reached 100% completion. You have activated your specialty beginner divination and learned the skill coin divination LV1. Beginner divination, you are now a mature fortune teller and can feel invisible luck. Luck plus one permanently. Coin divination LV1, divine the good or bad luck of a specific event, whether it's good or bad, limited to one time per day, no consumption. Note, coin is required as a medium. Link returned the book to its original position after reading it and went back to the sweeping monk. Sir, do you know where postnatal care of sows is? The white-haired elder looked up at Link again, his eyes filled with an indescribable emotion. This book is on the third row of the common area, the first floor of bookshelf A. From left to right, it's the twenty-third book. After saying that, he said earnestly, Young man, it's a good thing to love reading but you have to understand that you can't chew too much, it's better to focus on one than to read the entire sea of books. Thank you for your guidance, old sir. This junior will remember it. Even so, Link still turned and ran straight for the bookshelf. This old man, if I didn't know that I have to activate five specialties to activate the general ability, I would have believed you. After complaining, Link started munching on the book. U1S1, this hidden fifth element's general element mission was indeed quite shady. The first was the prerequisite of perfectness, which was to reach ten points in all seven attributes at level ten. This was not something that ordinary people could achieve. The second was to go to the library and master the five specialties. These specialties couldn't be knowledge books of the other elements, otherwise, they would activate their classes, so they could only be learned in the general area. In the end, in the last round, this little old man even said, don't be a philanderer, be a specialist. If a normal player heard this from an NPC who never spoke nonsense, they would naturally do as he said and go for a specialized class. Who would still think of biting the bullet? Up to this point, Link was already full of respect for the player who had activated the general element in his previous life. One had to be extremely lucky to be able to complete all the tests and activate the hidden fifth element. Oh, D. Awesome. Ten minutes later, Link finished reading Postnatal Care of Souse with a series of melodious system notifications. Your Postnatal Care of Souse has reached 100% completion. You have activated the specialty first encounter with wild beasts and learned the skill eye of the wild beast LV1. Initial awareness of wild beasts, you have mastered the habits of wild beasts, and can start communication with them. Eye of the Beast Level 1, establish a connection with wild beasts under the premise that the wild beasts are friendly, observe the world from the perspective of the wild beasts' maximum communication range, 500 meters, consumption, 5 stamina slash minute, unable to establish a connection with wild beasts above your level. Link closed the book and returned it to its original position. He took a deep breath and walked towards the librarian. After reading three books in the library, he obtained three specialties, Poison Concoction Level 1, Basic Divination, and Basic Knowledge of Wild Beasts. In addition to the Basic Shooting LVL1 and Basic Combat LVL1 that were activated during the battle, he had five specialties. Now, he looked at his attribute panel again and it instantly became much richer. I love reading, reading makes me happy. Link walked up to the librarian again. This time, before Link could say anything, the librarian spoke first. Young man, the ocean of books has no end, and it's beneficial to open them. You're able to integrate the contents of three books in such a short time, which shows that you have an extraordinary aptitude. Are you interested in exploring the ocean of books and becoming a erudite? 
Lin Kei was overjoyed. He had finally found the hidden profession. Do you wish to choose erudite as your profession? Yes slash no. Note 1, after becoming a erudite, you can ignore the restrictions and learn the skills of other classes. Note 2, after choosing erudite as a profession, you will not be able to choose a secondary profession in the future. Note 3, after becoming a erudite, you will be able to learn the skills of other elements. You can only learn the next stage of skills after the skill has reached the maximum level. Note 4, after becoming a erudite, the amount of experience points required to level up skills will double. Note 5, the choice cannot be changed or reneged upon. Please make your decision carefully. Looking at the conditions, Link chose yes without hesitation. What was there to consider? After becoming a scholar, he could cultivate all four types of skills, so why would he need a sub-occupation? Doubling the experience points required to level up a skill was not a problem for Lin Kei at all. Not to mention that there was still half a year before the open beta, even if he had six years of memory of the mission plot in his previous life, experience was definitely not a problem for him. It was said that pairing up a main and secondary element was fun. From now on, Link would be able to pair up all four elements. He would definitely be able to create the strongest pairing that no one had ever done before. After Link made his choice, the system immediately gave him its feedback. Congratulations on activating the profession erudite, status, refugee, civilian. Based on the five specialties that you have mastered, a unique skill will be generated misfortune bullet. A unique exclusive skill. Link's eyes brightened. He didn't expect that becoming a scholar would also give him exclusive skills based on the specialty he had. Regarding this point, the erudite scholar who had exposed the news on the forum in his previous life did not explain it. It was definitely a pleasant surprise for Link. There were three types of skills in fate. The most common ones were the normal skills. As long as you had a skill book, an NPC to teach you, or if you met the requirements, you could learn them. There was also a limited skill that had a limited number of uses, similar to a limited prop. Usually, such skills were powerful or unique, and were extremely difficult to obtain. The last type was exclusive skills, also known as template skills. The growth rate of this skill was extremely high. It was unique and could not be taught. It was common for leaders and legendary NPCs. It was a skill that players could only stare at and never learn. And now, Link had obtained an exclusive skill. Bullet of Misfortune, just from the name, it should be a skill that was derived from beginner divination. Link looked at the skill description. Bullets of Bad Luck Level 1 colon 6 Bullets of Bad Luck are automatically generated every day. After hitting the target, one five points of luck will be deducted randomly. Lasts for one hour, deduction effect cannot be stacked, no consumption. The target's luck value has been deducted. Link gasped. At first glance, this skill didn't look amazing. It was terrifying. As everyone knew, in Destiny, luck was linked to the drop rate of items, critical hits, and the probability of special events. If one's luck could be deducted, it would affect the probability of a series of events. It was the so-called favorable weather, favorable terrain, and favorable people. Link's coin could measure the time, and the bullet of misfortune could determine the person. Link had the advantage in two of the three points. Do you think this skill is useful? This was too useful. As expected of a hidden profession. It gave me such a big surprise the moment it appeared. After his excitement, Link bowed slightly to the librarian. No matter what, this old man was still his profession mentor. Moreover, judging from this old man's state of knowing all the books like the back of his hand, he must be a erudite. The librarian looked at Link and nodded in satisfaction. N, not bad. You have to study hard in the future and don't waste your talent. You can leave now. Come back to me when you are well educated. As soon as he finished speaking, Link received a mission from the system. You have triggered the job mission a well-learned man. Mission hint, 
when you reach level 50, come back and look for your job mentor. He will give you the next step of instructions. Mission Reward, Unknown Job Mission, Reward Unknown It was still too early for Link to reach level 50. By then, it would be the later stages of version 1.0. Link didn't leave immediately after bidding his farewell. Instead, he went straight to the martial arts section of the library. In Destiny, there was a limit to the number of skills that could be learned. The calculation formula was, number of skills equals level slash 2. Link was now level 10 and could learn a total of 5 skills. The poison throwing, coin divination, beast's eye, and misfortune bullets that Link had just learned were all support type skills and could not cause direct damage to the enemy. Therefore, he still needed an active attack skill. Considering his current strength and skill configuration, Link decisively pulled out a book from the shelf in the martial arts section. Another hour later, Link came out of the library with a pot of daffodils in his hands. From afar, Link could see Afu sleeping on the bench. The treasure hunting mouse was in the pocket of Afu's suit, showing its cute little head. It seemed to have been influenced by Afu and was also sleeping with its eyes closed. In the bag beside the seat, there were burgers and soda. It seemed that they had not been touched. This fool, didn't I tell him to eat first? Link stepped forward. It opened its eyes before it even got close. Seeing that its master had returned, Ching Ching ran out of the pocket of Afu's suit and scurried onto Link's body. She curiously fiddled with the daffodils in Link's arms. Immediately after, Afu felt that his pocket was empty, and he subconsciously reached out to touch it. When it realized that the treasure hunting mouse was missing, it immediately opened its eyes and woke up. It then saw its boss, Link. Boss, you're done. He then picked up the bag and said, Boss, you must not have eaten yet, right? I bought a hamburger and soda. Hurry up and eat. All right, let's eat together. Link placed the daffodils on the wooden table and put the gun strap back on. Then, he and Afu began to gobble down the food. When one was hungry, anything would taste good. Although hamburgers were junk food, they still tasted authentic and had sufficient ingredients. The two of them gobbled up the food, choking so much that they beat their chests and stamped their feet. Maria. Please marry me. At this moment, a man's shout came from the entrance of the library. A man in a white collar suit suddenly knelt in front of a female staff member at the library entrance and began to propose. The female staff member shyly took the large bouquet of roses from the businessman, her cheeks flushed, and she whispered, I'm willing to. Fu, wait for me. Link picked up the treasure hunting mouse and wiped his mouth with its fine fur. He then walked over her slowly. Dear lady, can you give me this bouquet of flowers? When the female staff saw Link, she suddenly remembered that it was the handsome and unruly young man who had entered the library before. She looked at Link with a slight tremble in her eyes. Hey brother, I'm proposing to you. Don't mess things up on purpose, okay? The businessman frowned, thinking, where did this person come from? Shut up. You have no right to speak. Link and the female staff said in unison. 42 Chapter 42 Mutant Killer The female staff blushed shyly and pushed a huge bouquet of roses in front of Link. Sir, I'll be more than happy to. The businessman, who was half kneeling on the ground, opened his mouth wide in shock. She was the one who bought the flowers with a lot of money and proposed to him. Why wasn't she the main character? Link carefully received the large bouquet. He then held his breath and tore off a few petals. You two, quickly swallow these petals. The suitor and the female staff were dumbfounded. Even the staff around them were dumbfounded. They didn't understand why he suddenly wanted to swallow the rose petal. The suitor stood up, clenched his fists, and clenched his teeth. Don't you go too far. Not only did you ruin my proposal, you're even trying to humiliate me. Link pointed the head of the rose down and said calmly, Save your energy. Now, 
you'd better roll up your sleeves and check if your blood vessels have already turned purple. The suitor was shocked and suspicious. He lifted his sleeve. There were indeed purple and black blood vessels near his forearm, and there were countless blood vessels spreading outward. It looked terrifying. W what's going on? The suitor trembled all over as a sense of helplessness and fear welled up in his heart. You should also lift up the sleeves of your forearms. The female staff was at a loss. She quickly followed Link's instructions and rolled up her sleeves. On her fair arm, a purple vein could be seen. The only difference was that it was not so purple that it had turned black. First, chew and eat these petals, then listen to me slowly. At this time, how could the two still have any temper? They hurriedly grabbed the rose petals and chewed. This flower looks no different from a rose, but it's just similar in shape. In fact, it's a highly poisonous wild flower called Purple Dream Luo. The toxicity of this flower is transmitted through the air, and in large doses, it can cause hallucinations and put one's life in danger. Lin Kei glanced at the suitor and said, If I'm not wrong, you drove here, right? The man was dumbfounded as he nodded. How did this person know everything? You didn't turn on the air conditioner in the car, and you didn't open the windows as a result, the air can't circulate, so your symptoms will be more serious than this lady's. Ah? I thought I was too nervous preparing to propose, so I felt a little dazed. It turns out I was poisoned, Ying Luo. As for this lady, after receiving the flowers, she lowered her head and sniffed it causing the poison to enter her body through her nose. Fortunately, the dosage wasn't too high, so I should only feel a little dizzy. The female staff member pressed her temple and said, I also thought that I was too excited, Ying Luo. If the two of you plan to go home tonight to spend the night, I'm sure you'll be two dead bodies tomorrow morning. Lin Kei glanced at the blood vessels in their arms. They had all recovered to different degrees. The purple dream Luo's petals can neutralize the poisonous gas it emits. Next, go to the ventilation area and breathe in more fresh air. The poison will be completely cured at night. The surrounding library staff were all dumbfounded. They worked in the library, but none of them knew about this kind of obscure knowledge. This young gentleman could determine the species and problems of this flower with just a glance from a distance. His profound knowledge was really impressive. Sir, may I know your name? Or give me your contact information. I'll definitely repay you for saving my life. Link waved his hand. He picked up the purple dream silk and looked at it. You don't have to be so polite this bouquet of flowers will be my thanks then, I wish you a happy wedding. Then, Link left the library amidst a round of applause and thanks. He had gained a lot from this wave. He had just learned how to make poison, and he had just stolen a pot of daffodils from the library. He was ready to test his skills. As a result, he had accidentally found the purple dream Luo at the entrance, which was a colorless, tasteless, and highly hallucinating poisonous flower. This time, Link had a new idea. Fu, I'll give you a task. Boss, tell me. Put the petals into the metal box and let the army ants break them down into juice. Then, put the daffodil roots in as well. Also, remember not to bury your head in this bouquet of flowers. Lin Kei started the Will-O-Wisp V8. Next up was the last stop of the Day Platinum Hotel. However, before that, he needed to go somewhere to update his equipment. As Link streaked through the air, AFU sat in the passenger's seat carrying out Link's orders. She placed the purple dream Luo and daffodil roots into the metal box. The silver army ants chewed on the petals and narcissus roots with all their might. Soon, there was only the bright red juice left in the iron box. Link drove back to the slums and parked the car by the side of the road. Afu, wait in the car for a while I'll go in and buy something. Not long after, Link walked out of the arms shop. He threw away the metal box containing the flower juice and hummed as he walked out. Why don't we test our luck today? Lin Kei had a sudden thought. 
Since the coin divination skill did not consume energy and was limited to one use a day, it would be a waste if he did not use it. As for coins, Link took out the omniscient gold coin that Painter John had given him. If the people at Platinum Hotel knew that Link was using the gold coins they had been dreaming of to perform divination, they wondered how they would feel. It's a good chance to test my luck. I'll go to Platinum Hotel and use it. Link clutched the omniscient gold coin in his hand and focused on what he needed to divine. Let's divine how my luck is today, Ying Luo. As Link spoke, he flicked the omniscient gold coin up with his thumb, causing the air to ripple. Pa! Link caught the falling gold coin on the back of his hand. Opening it slowly, Link saw the thorny rose on it. Hey, are you fated with flowers today? The thorny rose was a gold coin positive, which meant that today's luck was not bad. He picked up the gold coin and thought about his good luck today. From the time he consumed the gene repair fluid to the time he activated his class in the library, to the time he obtained rare poison materials at the entrance, he had galloped willfully on a road named Smooth. Hey! Handsome, can I borrow your fire? Suddenly, a melodious female voice called out to Link from behind. Link turned around. He saw a young woman in a fiery red dress. The makeup on her face was thick but not vulgar. The two ponytails behind her head were always full of energy and swung left and right with the steps of her high heels. Her slender legs were covered with black fishnet stockings. Link couldn't help but think of the seductive dancers in the underground black market. The woman had a long and thin lady's cigarette in her mouth. She reached out and kept pressing her thumb, indicating that she needed a lighter. I'm sorry, said Link, shrugging, but I don't have a lighter. Lin Kay continued to walk out of the alley, but his hand had already reached for the gun strap under his suit. Bada! The crisp sound of a lighter. In an instant. Link turned around and took out his Glock 17. But immediately, he saw the woman with heavy makeup waving a fireball in her hand, which was flying straight at him. Damn it, it's an ability user. Link pounced and fired a few shots. The fire ability users also hurriedly looked for cover. Lin Kay hid behind the trash can. A moment later, he heard the sound of firecrackers. He stood up abruptly, and a moment later, the trash can he was hiding in was blown away. The shockwave from the explosion was like a heavy punch that hit Link's back. You have been affected by the aftershock of the explosion and received 10 points of impact damage. Link's body leaned forward in the air, and when he landed, he rolled to hide behind a trash can. Whoosh! 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 The silenced pistol fired three more shots in an instant, interrupting the woman in red's spell. At the same time, Link cast a detect on it. Based on the level of you and the other party, the following information has been obtained. Name, unknown. Race, mutated human. Level, level 10 plus, elite. Class, fire element elist. Identity, unknown. HP, 650-650. Energy, 260-300. Attributes, Intelligence 30, Energy 35, Others Unknown. Skill, Explosive Flame, Other Unknown. Equipment, Unknown. Specialty, Unknown. Evaluation, Dangerous Flames. Another Level 10 Elite. And he's an Elementalist. Link felt his head throb. He had just divined that everything would be fine today, but in less than a minute, he encountered a mutant who wanted to kill him. This divination, was it poisonous? Mutated humans were different from ordinary humans after being mutated by radiation. They usually had an unparalleled talent in sensing energy. Their ability to be sensitive to energy allowed them to respond to elements or control the energy of matter. The three most common ones are elemental, illusionary, and telekinesis. The unknown mutant in front of him was a fire elementalist who pursued the ultimate damage among the control of elements. The female mutated human was hiding behind the wall. She lit a lighter and the flame was instantly sucked into her palm and grew stronger. 
the treasure hunting mouse jumped onto Link's knee and gestured with its pinky. It then pointed at the corner of the corridor and turned sideways, indicating that the enemy was behind the wall. Link nodded and heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately, he was alone. The army ants on his body began to approach the wall. This time, Link was careful as if he was facing a great enemy. As both of them were level 10 elites, a fire elementalist was obviously more difficult to deal with than a pugilist. First of all, fire elementalists' long-range combat abilities made it more difficult to create and grasp flaws. The second reason was the fire elementalist's damage. It was definitely the number one among those of the same level. The damage from the fire blast would definitely be enough to make Link feel good all the way from the Sandu city to the Endless Sea. Of course, Link's spear technique was the most terrifying. He was only at basic marksmanship level 1, so his hit rate in close combat was higher. However, the hit rate in long-range attacks was really worrying. There was one more thing about fire elementalists that gave Link a headache. During the battle with Jack, the army ants had only been knocked unconscious by the Qijin, and they would recover after a period of rest. However, the Silver Army Ants were most afraid of two attributes. One was magnetism, and the other was fire. The high temperature of the flames could directly kill the Army Ants. If the Army Ants were hit by the fire blast, they would be killed instantly. Link's heart ached. Therefore, the Army Ants had to be successful in every attack. By the way, beautiful lady, why did you attack me for no reason? If it's a love debt, we can sit down and slowly reminisce about it, Ying Luo. Said Link. He was still paying attention to the corner of the wall, ready to run at any moment to avoid the fire blast. I didn't expect you to be a scumbag. Then you should die. Link was dumbfounded. What? Don't you follow the basic laws when you attack now? Link quietly reached into his holster and took out an old revolver with his other hand. The chamber of the revolver had a capacity of six rounds, and it was loaded with six bullets of misfortune. Beauty, I'm not joking. You should at least let me know why you want to kill me, right? The corner of the room fell into silence. Link looked at the treasure hunting mouse questioningly. Little treasure nodded with certainty, indicating that it was still behind the wall and hadn't moved. Then, he looked at the position of the silver army ants. They were almost at the corner of the wall. It's a crime to be in possession of a jade. Who asked you to have an omniscient gold coin in your hand? As soon as he finished speaking, Link saw a huge fireball appear from the corner of the wall. It was several times bigger than the previous one. It was like a small sun, flying straight towards him. F asterisk CK Fireball explosion Link stood up and ran off. Boom. At the same time, inside the Will-O-Wisp V8 by the roadside. Creak 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 creak. Afu had accidentally turned on the car radio and was wriggling and swaying to the music. His eyes were filled with joy. He didn't expect to hear the traditional music of his hometown in the city radio of Shandu. BGM Astronomia. It's this feeling, I'm intoxicated. Even though there was a storm in the alley, explosions, and gunshots. He didn't pay attention to the outside world and was only interested in music. Chapter 43 The First Battle After the Sage The fireball flew towards Link at an incredible speed, and he immediately dodged it. A second before the fireball exploded, Link kicked off the ground and twisted his body with his powerful waist strength. He held the silenced Glock in his left hand and the revolver in his right hand, facing the fireball and the red-clad mutated human. Explosive Fireball, the signature killing skill of fire elementalists, had a special feature it required the caster to spread his hands and use his eyes and arms as a medium to control the explosive fireball to move and attack. The moment he relaxed or moved, the condensed fireball would scatter. Link took advantage of this characteristic of the fireball to deal stable damage. Whoosh! 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 The bullet from the noise-suppressed Glock in his left hand shot out like water. He carefully aimed with the revolver in his right hand and fired the first shot. 
a string of numbers appeared above the mutant's head. Minus 27. Minus 30. Minus 29. In addition to these numbers, there was also a big miss above the mutated human's head. Lin Kei could tell at a glance that the miss meant that the bullet of misfortune did not hit the target. This was because if a normal bullet did not hit the target, there would not be any words displayed. Boom! The fireball exploded. The garbage cans and the garbage piled up next to them were instantly turned to dust under the high temperature flames. The metal garbage cans were melted and scorched black, leaving only half of the black wreckage struggling on. The red wall turned charred black as the light spread. The huge wave of air was like an invisible fist that landed heavily on Link. Oh! Link felt as if someone had punched him in the face and in his stomach. It was burning. But even so, Link's arm and the gun were firmly in a straight line. After adjusting, he pulled the trigger again. Bang! Bang! You have used your revolver to hit the mutated human in red, causing 68 points of critical damage and applying the bleeding effect on the target. The bullet of misfortune has taken effect successfully. The mutated human in red has been deducted 4 points of luck. Duration, 1 hour. Before Link could rejoice, the turbulent air wave pushed him against the wall, creating a hole in it. He then fell heavily to the ground. You have been affected by the explosive fireball Qi Jin, receiving 20 points of impact damage. You fell from a high place. Your endurance resisted some of the damage, but you received 5 points of secondary damage. In just two short exchanges, Link had lost a total of 35 health points. The female mutated human lost 154 health points. Link furrowed his brows. This seemed like a huge gain, but in reality, it would be a draw. In fact, it was a loss for him. After all, he only had 150 health points while the female mutant had 650 health points. If this continued, Link would be the first to give up. And this was under the condition that Link was only affected by the aftermath of the attack. If they couldn't avoid the skill, they would be turned into ashes in the next second. The female mutated human quickly hid in the corner. Link was more difficult to deal with than he had imagined. He knew the fire elementalist's skills and weaknesses like the back of his hand. Link knew how to deal as much damage as he could before the fireball exploded and he couldn't move. He dodged in time every time and was only slightly affected by the aftershock, but he did not suffer any fatal injuries. Most importantly, this guy discovered her intentions at the first moment. How did he do it? The female mutated human thought as she quickly took out a hemostatic spray and a quick bandage. The hemostatic spray was sprayed on the bullet wound, and the cool mist-like gel inside began to act on the wound. The bleeding from the bullet wound stopped at a speed visible to the naked eye. The female mutated human then started spraying the second wound. At first, it was still a mist-like spray, but after a few seconds, the spray made a sound like a fart. White foam squeezed out of the nozzle, gathering weakly at the nozzle, like a poisoned person foaming at the mouth. Damn it! It's actually used up at this time. The female mutated human's eyes widened in disbelief. Her hemostatic spray had actually died of old age at this time. He had no choice but to wrap his wound with a bandage. The female mutated human's bandaging technique was swift and sharp. After all, as an assassin, bandaging was a necessary skill. However, when the end of the bandage was glued together, the killer's hand trembled. The quick-use bandage's adhesive part had failed, and the bandage could not be tied tightly. The female post-human picked up the bandage and looked at its shelf life. She immediately closed her eyes and bit her red lips. Today's Liao Jin's back. Link was also hiding behind cover. He turned his head to take a look and his brain worked quickly. The female mutated human's identity was confirmed. She was either an assassin or a bounty hunter. He was here for the omniscient gold coin, which meant that his information had already appeared in the Platinum Hotel's database. Link couldn't help but curse in a low voice, John, you bastard. The omniscient gold coin had already begun to unscrupulously display its charm, 
tempting the greedy people to approach Link. With that, Link immediately got into the zone. He put aside these vexing thoughts and focused on analyzing the battle. First, the female mutant was a level 10 elite. In other words, she had mastered a total of five skills. In the instant exchange just now, the fire elementalist had used two of his class skills, explosive flame and explosive fireball. At this point, Link had figured out all of the female mutated human's skills. It was different from Link's scholar status, which allowed him to learn any skill. On this basis, there was a more rigorous distinction between players and NPCs. Since he was a fire elementalist, the class passive skill Tinder occupied one of the skill slots. Next were the two job skills, explosive flame and explosive fireball. In addition, life skills and sub-profession skills also needed to occupy a slot each. Life skills had little to do with combat, and sub-classes could only be unlocked at level 20 and above. In other words, out of the five skill slots, only four could be used. In other words, Link had already seen through the female mutant. She had exposed all her combat skills to Link. Xiobeo, help me sense if there are any metal objects on the mutated human. The treasure hunting mouse's nose twitched, and it gestured with its claws. Oh, dash. Then, he took a deep breath and raised all the fat in his body to the upper part of his body, revealing the long legs hidden under the fat. He pointed to the outside of his thigh. The treasure hunting mouse's gestures were difficult, but Link understood. The female mutated human had a pistol on her outer thigh. At this point, Link had figured out all of the female mutated human's trump cards. Link began to plan the battle. Link looked up and locked his eyes on the unmoving sand sculpture in the corner of the building. You have successfully used Eye of the Beast LV-1 on the Sand Eagle. Link's view changed to the sand sculpture on the roof. The view was wide from above and he could see the female mutant hiding in the corner. Then, Link's eyes lit up. He walked out of cover with a silenced pistol and quickly approached the female mutated human. The sound of Link's leather shoes was extremely clear in the quiet alley. Every step was like a death sentence, stepping on people's hearts. Gah! The sand eagle on the roof suddenly shouted. The next second, the female mutated human appeared from behind the wall. Blood was flowing from the spot where she was shot. The numbers minus two, minus three, minus two kept appearing above her head. At the same time, she had a ball of fire in her hand bursting flames. However, by the time she had dodged to the side to look for Link, he had already stepped on the red wall of the alley and jumped into the air. With the help of the inertia from the run-up and the jump, he fired non-stop with his silenced pistol. In the gap between shots, his other hand suddenly swung out. A cold light flashed. A beautiful flower of blood spurted out of the female mutated human's arm. At the same time, the fire blast that was flying towards Link gradually disintegrated in the air. The fire elements dissipated in the air and disappeared without a trace. When the female mutant saw the flames she had gathered dissipate and her arm was injured, she gritted her teeth and immediately chose to retreat. The first rule of becoming an assassin retreat immediately when you find that you can't fight. Only a living killer could be called a killer, and could give people endless pressure. And those who chose to fight the enemy head on and get killed were stupid. The female mutated human took out a pistol from her thigh and turned back as she ran. She was always on guard against Link who appeared from the corner. The skin and flesh on her arm were split open, like a delicate and beautiful rose. The bright red blood flowed down his arm and finally gathered at his fingertips. More and more blood gathered together, turning into drops of blood that dripped down to the ground. Link's figure was still nowhere to be seen around the corner of the alley. This was supposed to be good news but it made the female mutated human tremble in fear and burn her insides. There must be something wrong with this abnormal situation. Instead, Link slowed down and strolled in. At the same time, he mumbled something. One, two, three, four. As Link shouted twenty, the female mutated human who was running away fell to the ground. 
The female mutated human's limbs were numb, as if they had been removed from her body. She could not feel anything. The blood on the wound on his arm turned from the bright red of a rose to the purplish black of a mulberry. The female mutated human fell to the ground with her head the only thing that was still conscious. The sound of leather shoes slowly walking over made people's scalps numb. The female mutated human knew what this meant. Every time she heard a sound, it meant that she was closer to death. The female mutated human's expression changed from fear, despair, and expressionless to a strange smile. When Link reached the female mutated human, he stopped. You've lost, Link said. The female mutated human laughed wildly. Ha ha ha. If I didn't bring an empty bottle of hemostatic spray and an expired bandage, you wouldn't be my match. You're not the one who defeated me. It's luck. The female mutated human tilted her head and saw Link standing behind her with a smile. What are you laughing at? I'm just thinking how much your head is worth. That smile of yours isn't that simple, Ying Luo. As soon as the female mutated human finished speaking, Link put away the palm-sized knife in his hand and replaced a new magazine for his silenced pistol. He then fired a series of shots at her head. Some things didn't need to be explained. You have killed the female mutant killer, level 10 plus elite, you have received 10,000 experience points. Link knelt down and started searching the female mutant's body. Link's corpse searching skills were at the point of perfection. He searched the entire body in a short while. You have received 10 omniscient silver coins, a semi-automatic pistol, and a mysterious key. Lin Kei looked at the 10 omniscient silver coins in his palm and was speechless. He seemed to have fallen into an endless cycle. The killer was after him for the omniscient gold. He killed the killer. Receive omniscient coins from Platinum Hotel. The killer continued to kill him for the omniscient gold coin. He continued to counterattack. He continued to obtain omniscient coins from the other party. At this rate, he would have more and more omniscient coins on him. It's really giving me a headache. Even so, Link still collected the loot with practiced movements and walked out of the alley. This was Link's first battle after becoming a scholar, and it was of great significance to him. The effects of various skills and items were clearly displayed in this battle. Just as Link walked out of the alley, he saw his will-o'-wisp V8 creaking non-stop. Then, she heard a burst of rhythmic music and saw Afu swaying to the music in the car. Every beat was stuck at the rhythm of the music. As expected, dark-skinned people naturally have musical talent. Link sighed and shouted to Afu, Fu, catch. When Afu heard his boss's voice, his soul instantly left the music and he quickly turned off the car radio. Ah, what's that? Before Afu could react, he saw boss throw a round thing from a distance. It landed accurately in his hand through the front window without any glass. However, when Afu took the item and looked at it carefully, his body suddenly trembled as if he had stepped on an electric door. Boss, didn't you say you were going to buy some weapons? Why did you bring back a kill? Although Fu wasn't afraid of dead people, he didn't have any psychological preparation. He suddenly caught a head in his hand. The young man was still frightened. That frightened expression and wide open eyes of his was a very funny sight. Take it well, this head is worth a lot of money. The car engine started in one go. With the roar of the engine, the Will-O-Wisp V8 once again surged. Their target this time was the Platinum Hotel. Chapter 44 The Platinum Hotel Ten minutes after Lin K left the alley, a van stopped at the entrance. Four security guards in black suits and sunglasses, as well as two professionals in white protective suits, walked out of the car. The two security guards cordoned off the entrance of the alley and stood guard with serious expressions. The other security guards and professionals entered the alley and came to the dead female mutated human. After checking, the professional took off his mask and said, he's completely dead. One of the security guards patrolled the scene from the alley where the battle started and followed the blood to the body. Field survey complete. We can confirm that test subject 777 has yet to activate his ability. 
his physical fitness is consistent with the data. It's just that Ying Luo. But what? It's just that his fighting style is a little strange. At that time, the mutated human clearly still had 85% combat power. Why did he dare to run out from behind the cover? It doesn't make sense. I suggest you continue to observe. By the way, what's the situation with the mutated humans? Other than not having a head, its body is still complete. The time of death is not long, and the cell activity has not completely dissipated. There is still value in research and resurrection. A fire mutated human's corpse. It's worth a lot. Soon, the men in black and the people in uniform came out of the alley. They even carried out a mysterious black bag and loaded it into the truck quickly. The van quickly left the place as if nothing had happened. Passers-by glanced at the van and saw a line of large words printed on the Shell United Pharmaceutical Company. The passers-by had long been accustomed to this. This company's van would always appear in all kinds of places, mysterious. Will a wisp V8 returned to the place where he had appeared last night the side of the main road in front of the shadow alley. When he came to the shadow alley again and recalled what had happened last night, it felt like a dream. Boss, should I go in too? Fu asked while holding the beautiful head. Link waved his hand, signaling for Afu to come in. Although it was noon, the news of the turmoil in the Jack gang should have spread. It was definitely not a wise choice to let Fu sit alone in a car with the Jack gang. Link and Afu entered the underground black market with ease. As he walked past the dance floor, Link noticed that there were many beautiful dancers winking at him and swaying their waists, exuding charm. It was too real. Before he consumed the gene repair fluid, he didn't even get a single bit of attention. In the blink of an eye, she had become the brightest star on the dance floor. Lin Kei shook his head helplessly. If this was the case in the future, how could he hide in the crowd? Sigh, this damn charm. Link and Afu entered the subway station. This time, the two of them didn't split up and walk straight inside. Some people would definitely find it strange. Didn't they agree to go to the Platinum Hotel? Why did Link come to the underground black market in the blink of an eye? In fact, the Platinum Hotel in Shandu was located in the deepest part of the underground black market. It even existed before the underground black market. The Platinum Hotel had strict rules. It provided a high-level custom service internally, but it could only be traded through internal circulation of omniscient coins. This high-end service provided considerable convenience and enhancement to killers and bounty hunters who carried out missions. However, there were only a few assassins who could enjoy such high-end services. Therefore, some businessmen with keen senses began to set up stalls outside the Platinum Hotel providing various services and selling all kinds of equipment and materials. Although it was not as high-end as Platinum Hotel, it satisfied the needs of most assassins and bounty hunters. As the market continued to operate, it attracted a large number of other buyers. Purchase demand plus business opportunity equals prosperous market. Therefore, the person in charge of the Platinum Hotel in Shandu saw a business opportunity and began to set up rules to integrate these small markets, gradually forming the third largest force in Shandu the underground black market. The rules of the underground black market had evolved from the Platinum Hotel, so there were many similarities in many places. For example, those who had a conflict with him would be expelled permanently. If other places introduced similar rules, it would definitely become a laughingstock. However, the underground black market followed the rules of the Platinum Hotel, and no one felt that it was against the rules. First of all, the underground black market and the Platinum Hotel in Shadow were both managed by the same person. Second, do not underestimate the power of rules. It had been more than 20 years since the establishment of the underground black market. During this period, there had been no lack of experts who disdained the rules and caused trouble in the underground black market or the Platinum Hotel. However, they were all killed in the end. Rules were rules, and those who broke them had to pay the price. This was the sentence that was most often heard in the Platinum Hotel. 
Link and Afu entered the black market. At noon, there were already many shops open for business, but there were only a few customers during the day. It was not until after six in the afternoon that the customers would enter the underground black market one after another to reveal the nightlife of Shadu. At this time, most of the merchants would gather in twos and threes, move a small folding stool, pour a cup of tea, and discuss the recent hot topics in Shadu or gossip. It was easy to get through the boring afternoon. Have you heard recently that the Wasteland Gang in the desert accidentally angered the underground god when they were excavating the ancient ruins? They set off a quicksand and drowned all the mercenaries and slaves on the spot. The way I see it, you can't believe in all these supernatural things. That's not what I heard at all. Oh? Then tell me what's going on. The old man, who was wearing a waistcoat and sandals, leaned forward slightly and deliberately lowered his voice. The news I got is that the Wasteland Gang has been studying a new technology recently, secretly doing research underground. As for excavating the ancient ruins in the desert, it's all a cover. I heard that the quicksand happened because the Underground Research Institute created a superhuman who single-handedly overturned the entire research institute. That's why the ancient ruins would sink. Everyone would die except for that superhuman who managed to escape with the experimental data. The person next to him waved his hand in disbelief. Tisk, is it really as incredible as you said? The old man's eyes were as big as copper bells, and his face was serious. Kid, don't doubt me. Ask someone you know to go to the Platinum Hotel and see if the Wasteland Gang has put a bounty on the Platinum Hotel, 30,000 Wasteland Coins for a Slave. When have you ever seen anyone use Wasteland money to reward a slave? This slave is obviously the modified human, and he has the experimental data. Doesn't that explain the problem? The old man's words were well thought out, and there were facts to support it so people couldn't help but believe it. After a moment, someone beside him exclaimed, I just sent a message to my friend and asked him to check the reward for Platinum Hotel. There really is such a reward. The old man fanned himself with his cattail leaf fan, enjoying the admiration and praise of the young people around him. The corners of his mouth revealed a faint, pretentious smile that said, You young people are too simple-minded and stupid. Link and Afu stood not far away, trying hard not to laugh as they watched the old man's show of power. All right, let's go. Link called for Afu to leave. He didn't expect the Wasteland Gang's bounty to reach Shandu so soon. However, wasn't a bounty of 30,000 yuan a little too little? Was he that worthless? Boss, Afu whispered, was that old man talking about you? Also, we're wanted by the Wasteland Gang. What should we do? Fu had a natural fear of the Wasteland Gang. His home and family had disappeared because of the Wasteland Gang. In the desert, the Wasteland Gang represented the Supreme Heaven and was irresistible. Link patted Fu's shoulder and said, Don't be afraid I'm the one wanted by the Wasteland Gang they don't know about your escape. Now that I've changed my appearance, they wouldn't be able to recognize me even if I stood in front of them. Don't worry, just pretend this never happened. Afu thought about it and agreed. He sized up his boss. He was wearing a suit and looked like a gentleman, completely different from the slaves of the Wasteland Gang. Link and Afu walked through the subway station and arrived at the largest trade square. More than half of the shops here were not open yet, and the shops that were open were also deserted. Most of the people moved their chairs together, or lit a cigarette and leaned against the wall to chat. As the two of them passed by, they could hear a lot of miscellaneous news. Because it was just gossip, it was very attractive at first glance. Link and AFO unconsciously slowed down. Have you guys heard? The machinery faith hasn't been having a good time recently. The expressions of the people around them became extremely interesting when they heard the machinery faith. They all moved their small stools over. Everyone hated the machinery faith to the core, so they naturally had to enjoy whatever was related to them. What happened, tell me quickly. I also heard about it last night. 
It was said that a type of sand rat appeared in the Gobi Desert and ate all the plants and food in the Gobi Desert. Once they discovered any threat, their entire body would turn into sand and disappear without a trace. I heard that the zealots of the machinery faith in the Gobi were having a headache because of this. H.O.H. There's even a mouse that can turn into sand. This is really strange. That's right. However, ever since the Day of Reckoning, there have been more strange animals in the wild. Didn't you see that a new batch of wild beasts has come to the Colosseum recently? There are many mutated beasts. Really? Then we can go to the animal arena to play at night. It just so happens that I've earned a small sum of money recently, and my hands are a little itchy. Fu's eyes brightened when he heard that the rat had turned into sand. Boss, isn't a rat that has turned into sand just a pixie? But before she could finish, Link covered her mouth. Of course, he could tell that it was a sand rat. However, he did not expect this little guy to go and cause trouble for the machinery faith. It was really a coincidence. Link continued walking. He didn't expect news to spread so quickly in the black market in the afternoon. He heard a few familiar things after a few steps. However, these gossips and rumors were half true and half false. If he hadn't experienced it himself, he would have believed it like the others. The further they went, the fewer people gathered, and the fewer stalls there were. Link could already see the top of the Platinum Hotel in the distance. There were also many people gathered around the shops and stalls, but from their auras and clothes, it could be seen that they were not business people, but more like bounty hunters and assassins. Unlike the killers in Platinum Hotel, the level of these killers and bounty hunters was not high enough to enter the hotel. To put it simply, they were not recommended by the members, and they did not have the omniscient gold coins. He could only take on some wild work at the entrance of the Platinum Hotel and gather information while he was at it. Before Link could get close, he heard a boorish man complaining at the top of his lungs. I'm telling you, I almost didn't come back from this trip. In the future, when you go to the South for missions, don't ever go to Howling Heights again. Why? I even passed by the castle last month. What happened? There's something strange in the castle. Since you guys don't want to die, don't stay near that place next time. After the boorish man said that, he recalled what he had experienced and could not help but shiver. As Link and Afu walked past them, they exchanged a smile. They both knew what strange was. Fu, when we enter the hotel later, find a seat in the lobby. Don't run around and move around, understand? Fu nodded repeatedly. Don't worry, boss. I won't cause any trouble. Before he could finish, Afu followed Link into the hotel and was instantly shocked speechless by the luxurious style. Chapter 44 The Platinum Hotel Ten minutes after Lin Kei left the alley, a van stopped at the entrance. Four security guards in black suits and sunglasses, as well as two professionals in white protective suits, walked out of the car. The two security guards cordoned off the entrance of the alley and stood guard with serious expressions. The other security guards and professionals entered the alley and came to the dead female mutated human. After checking, the professional took off his mask and said, He's completely dead. One of the security guards patrolled the scene from the alley where the battle started and followed the blood to the body. Field survey complete. We can confirm that test subject 777 has yet to activate his ability. His physical fitness is consistent with the data. It's just that Ying Luo. But what? It's just that his fighting style is a little strange. At that time, the mutated human clearly still had 85% combat power. Why did he dare to run out from behind the cover? It doesn't make sense. I suggest you continue to observe. By the way, what's the situation with the mutated humans? Other than not having a head, its body is still complete. The time of death is not long, and the cell activity has not completely dissipated. There is still value in research and resurrection. A fire mutated human's corpse. It's worth a lot. Soon, 
the men in black and the people in uniform came out of the alley. They even carried out a mysterious black bag and loaded it into the truck quickly. The van quickly left the place as if nothing had happened. Passersby glanced at the van and saw a line of large words printed on the Shell United Pharmaceutical Company. The passersby had long been accustomed to this. This company's van would always appear in all kinds of places, mysterious. Will a wisp V8 return to the place where he had appeared last night the side of the main road in front of the shadow alley? When he came to the shadow alley again and recalled what had happened last night, it felt like a dream. Boss, should I go in too? Fu asked while holding the beautiful head. Link waved his hand, signaling for Afu to come in. Although it was noon, the news of the turmoil in the Jack Gang should have spread. It was definitely not a wise choice to let Fu sit alone in a car with the Jack Gang. Link and Afu entered the underground black market with ease. As he walked past the dance floor, Link noticed that there were many beautiful dancers winking at him and swaying their waists, exuding charm. It was too real. Before he consumed the gene repair fluid, he didn't even get a single bit of attention. In the blink of an eye, she had become the brightest star on the dance floor. Lin Kei shook his head helplessly. If this was the case in the future, how could he hide in the crowd? Sigh, this damn charm. Link and Afu entered the subway station. This time, the two of them didn't split up and walk straight inside. Some people would definitely find it strange. Didn't they agree to go to the Platinum Hotel? Why did Link come to the underground black market in the blink of an eye? In fact, the Platinum Hotel in Shandu was located in the deepest part of the underground black market. It even existed before the underground black market. The Platinum Hotel had strict rules. It provided a high-level custom service internally, but it could only be traded through internal circulation of omniscient coins. This high-end service provided considerable convenience and enhancement to killers and bounty hunters who carried out missions. However, there were only a few assassins who could enjoy such high-end services. Therefore, some businessmen with keen senses began to set up stalls outside the Platinum Hotel, providing various services and selling all kinds of equipment and materials. Although it was not as high-end as Platinum Hotel, it satisfied the needs of most assassins and bounty hunters. As the market continued to operate, it attracted a large number of other buyers. Purchase demand plus business opportunity equals prosperous market. Therefore, the person in charge of the Platinum Hotel in Shandu saw a business opportunity and began to set up rules to integrate these small markets, gradually forming the third largest force in Shandu the underground black market. The rules of the underground black market had evolved from the Platinum Hotel, so there were many similarities in many places. For example, those who had a conflict with him would be expelled permanently. If other places introduced similar rules, it would definitely become a laughingstock. However, the underground black market followed the rules of the Platinum Hotel, and no one felt that it was against the rules. First of all, the underground black market and the Platinum Hotel in Shadow were both managed by the same person. Second, do not underestimate the power of rules. It had been more than 20 years since the establishment of the underground black market. During this period, there had been no lack of experts who disdained the rules and caused trouble in the underground black market or the Platinum Hotel. However, they were all killed in the end. Rules were rules, and those who broke them had to pay the price. This was the sentence that was most often heard in the Platinum Hotel. Link and Afu entered the black market. At noon, there were already many shops open for business, but there were only a few customers during the day. It was not until after six in the afternoon that the customers would enter the underground black market one after another to reveal the nightlife of Shadu. At this time, most of the merchants would gather in twos and threes, move a small folding stool, pour a cup of tea, and discuss the recent hot topics in Shadu or gossip. It was easy to get through the boring afternoon. Have you heard recently that the Wasteland Gang in the desert accidentally angered the underground god when they were excavating the ancient ruins? They set off a quicksand and drowned all the mercenaries and slaves on the spot. The way I see it, 
you can't believe in all these supernatural things. That's not what I heard at all. Oh? Then tell me what's going on. The old man, who was wearing a waistcoat and sandals, leaned forward slightly and deliberately lowered his voice. The news I got is that the Wasteland Gang has been studying a new technology recently, secretly doing research underground. As for excavating the ancient ruins in the desert, it's all a cover. I heard that the quicksand happened because the Underground Research Institute created a superhuman who single-handedly overturned the entire research institute. That's why the ancient ruins would sink. Everyone would die except for that superhuman who managed to escape with the experimental data. The person next to him waved his hand in disbelief. Tisk, is it really as incredible as you said? The old man's eyes were as big as copper bells, and his face was serious. Kid, don't doubt me. Ask someone you know to go to the Platinum Hotel and see if the Wasteland Gang has put a bounty on the Platinum Hotel, 30,000 Wasteland coins for a slave. When have you ever seen anyone use Wasteland money to reward a slave? This slave is obviously the modified human, and he has the experimental data. Doesn't that explain the problem? The old man's words were well thought out, and there were facts to support it, so people couldn't help but believe it. After a moment, someone beside him exclaimed, I just sent a message to my friend and asked him to check the reward for Platinum Hotel. There really is such a reward. The old man fanned himself with his cattail leaf fan, enjoying the admiration and praise of the young people around him. The corners of his mouth revealed a faint, pretentious smile that said, you young people are too simple-minded and stupid. Link and Afu stood not far away, trying hard not to laugh as they watched the old man's show of power. All right, let's go. Link called for Afu to leave. He didn't expect the Wasteland Gang's bounty to reach Shandu so soon. However, wasn't a bounty of 30,000 yuan a little too little? Was he that worthless? Boss, Afu whispered. Was that old man talking about you? Also, we're wanted by the Wasteland Gang. What should we do? Fu had a natural fear of the Wasteland Gang. His home and family had disappeared because of the Wasteland Gang. In the desert, the Wasteland Gang represented the supreme heaven and was irresistible. Link patted Fu's shoulder and said, Don't be afraid I'm the one wanted by the Wasteland Gang they don't know about your escape. Now that I've changed my appearance, they wouldn't be able to recognize me even if I stood in front of them. Don't worry, just pretend this never happened. Afu thought about it and agreed. He sized up his boss. He was wearing a suit and looked like a gentleman, completely different from the slaves of the Wasteland Gang. Link and Afu walked through the subway station and arrived at the largest trade square. More than half of the shops here were not open yet and the shops that were open were also deserted. Most of the people moved their chairs together, or lit a cigarette and leaned against the wall to chat. As the two of them passed by, they could hear a lot of miscellaneous news. Because it was just gossip, it was very attractive at first glance. Link and AFO unconsciously slowed down. Have you guys heard? The machinery faith hasn't been having a good time recently. The expressions of the people around them became extremely interesting when they heard the machinery faith. They all moved their small stools over. Everyone hated the machinery faith to the core, so they naturally had to enjoy whatever was related to them. What happened, tell me quickly. I also heard about it last night. It was said that a type of sand rat appeared in the Gobi Desert and ate all the plants and food in the Gobi Desert. Once they discovered any threat, their entire body would turn into sand and disappear without a trace. I heard that the zealots of the machinery faith in the Gobi were having a headache because of this. H.O.H. There's even a mouse that can turn into sand. This is really strange. That's right. However, ever since the Day of Reckoning, there have been more strange animals in the wild. Didn't you see that a new batch of wild beasts has come to the Colosseum recently? There are many mutated beasts. Really? Then we can go to the animal arena to play at night. It just so happens that I've earned a small sum of money recently, and my hands are a little itchy. 
Fu's eyes brightened when he heard that the rat had turned into sand. Boss, isn't a rat that has turned into sand just a pixie? But before she could finish, Link covered her mouth. Of course, he could tell that it was a sand rat. However, he did not expect this little guy to go and cause trouble for the machinery faith. It was really a coincidence. Link continued walking. He didn't expect news to spread so quickly in the black market in the afternoon. He heard a few familiar things after a few steps. However, these gossips and rumors were half true and half false. If he hadn't experienced it himself, he would have believed it like the others. The further they went, the fewer people gathered, and the fewer stalls there were. Link could already see the top of the Platinum Hotel in the distance. There were also many people gathered around the shops and stalls, but from their auras and clothes, it could be seen that they were not business people, but more like bounty hunters and assassins. Unlike the killers in Platinum Hotel, the level of these killers and bounty hunters was not high enough to enter the hotel. To put it simply, they were not recommended by the members, and they did not have the omniscient gold coins. He could only take on some wild work at the entrance of the Platinum Hotel and gather information while he was at it. Before Link could get close, he heard a boorish man complaining at the top of his lungs. I'm telling you, I almost didn't come back from this trip. In the future, when you go to the South for missions, don't ever go to Howling Heights again. Why? I even passed by the castle last month. What happened? There's something strange in the castle. Since you guys don't want to die, don't stay near that place next time. After the boorish man said that, he recalled what he had experienced and could not help but shiver. As Link and Afu walked past them, they exchanged a smile. They both knew what strange was. Fu, when we enter the hotel later, find a seat in the lobby. Don't run around and move around, understand? Fu nodded repeatedly. Don't worry, boss. I won't cause any trouble. Before he could finish, Afu followed Link into the hotel and was instantly shocked speechless by the luxurious style. Chapter 46 S Rank Mission Thomas, how much is this necklace? Link said, pointing at the gold necklace. Thomas walked up and said, this necklace was unearthed together with Tumen Fafa's coffin. It was appraised to have no effect. It was used to embellish the sculpture because of its beautiful shape. It's not for sale, sir. How much is it in wasteland money? Mr. Lin, do you value this necklace very much? Link nodded. The death beetle represents death, he said. The scarab represents life. In the culture of the desert, this is a unique totem symbol, and it is also the belief of some tribes. Link rolled up the sleeves of his suit and shirt. Unfortunately, this is my faith. Link's arm had the same death worm and scarab tattoo. Thomas finally understood. He had been curious as to why Link had insisted on buying the necklace. So there was another reason behind it. Lifting up the tattoo on his arm, Link had made this decision after careful consideration. If the necklace was for sale, Link wouldn't need to say so much. He could just buy it and be happy. However, this thing was not for sale, so he would not force it under normal circumstances. However, if Link wanted the necklace, he needed a valid reason. The nest's gold finger had been fused into Link's blood, and this necklace had been dug out from Pharaoh Tumen's tomb. He had just bought the shroud of Pharaoh Tumen, and now he was spending money to buy the necklace for his faith. The logical relationship made sense and there was no problem. Mr. Lin, I've packed the goods you've bought. Just then, the staff at the counter behind him walked over with a bag. Link opened the bag and saw the bandages in the vacuum-packed packaging. The flaxen-colored bandages were all curled up because the air had been sucked out of them. They looked pockmarked, which reminded him of the vacuum-packed drunkard's peanuts. If Mr. Lin really likes this necklace, then I'll give it to you as a personal gift. Thomas put on his white gloves and carefully removed the necklace from the neck of the white sculpture. He then gestured for the staff to take a box. Soon, 
the staff quickly brought over a palm-sized black necklace box. Thomas placed the gold necklace into a box and handed it to Link. Link looked at the black necklace box and then at Thomas, who had a warm smile on his face. He said, I don't deserve it. Just give me a number. I don't like to owe people favors. Thomas smiled, it's been 25 years since the headquarters wanted to set up a branch in Shandu and sent me and the store manager here. John was the first and only assassin sent by the headquarters. It can be said that the prestige of the Platinum Hotel in Shadow was built by the three of us through bloody battles. I know this friend of mine very well. He has a very strange charm that makes people unconsciously want to get close to him. It was said that a killer was a loner, but he was more like a leader. With the hard work of the three of us, the prestige and scale of the Platinum Hotel in Shadow have grown bigger and bigger. We have also gradually gained some like-minded friends around us. At that time, there were a lot of close brothers who wanted John to recommend a few acquaintances to the Platinum Hotel, but they were all rejected he had always been strict in this aspect and never looked at relationships. When he announced his retirement five years ago, a large number of assassins and bounty hunters wanted to get his recommendation and take this opportunity to soar. Among them were some of the popular upstarts on the current assassin list and bounty list, but they all returned in failure. Thomas stared at Link and smiled in relief. You, on the other hand, are the first and only person he has recommended in the past 25 years. I'm afraid that even the Platinum Hotels in Dragon City and Fay have heard of your name, not to mention Shandu. Yes. Thomas reached out his hand, John once said that whoever can get his recognition is his friend. I happen to be his friend, so this necklace is a gift for our first meeting. Please don't reject it, Mr. Linear. Link stared into Thomas's eyes and saw sincerity. Thank you for your reminder, Thomas. I'll accept this gift, but it only represents our friendship. I can't accept the heavy friendship of the painter. Link accepted the gift and the necklace. Although he knew about John's influence in the Platinum Hotel, he didn't expect this guy to dig such a big hole this time. Forget about the one omniscient gold coin, now even the Platinum Hotel in Dragon City and Fay were being circulated. Did they not want to cause enough trouble? Thomas had also kindly reminded him that when the painter retired five years ago, many assassins and bounty hunters had gone to him to get his recommendation first. From then on, they would rise to the top, but in the end, all of them had returned in defeat. However, just five years later, the painter used the recommendation that he had hidden for 25 years to get Link into the Platinum Hotel. Wasn't this a scam? What would the killers and bounty hunters who had been rejected over the years think? Any normal person would definitely wonder how this kid managed to get the artist's favor. Link could already imagine the unconvinced youths coming from all over the Freedom Federation to challenge him. The challenges were normal but he was afraid that some radical people would directly assassinate him and want to use him as a stepping stone to rise. It was simply a huge pit. This guy actually said that those who were acknowledged were friends. How could he cheat his friends like this? I, Link, have never seen such a shameless person. Thomas took half a step back and nodded slightly. Then I'll head back to the front desk. If you need anything, you can find me there. After saying that, he left. Lin K looked at Thomas's back. This man had a sense of propriety and did not give off the feeling of annoyance. He was indeed a senior manager who had worked for 25 years. Now that he had the necklace, Link couldn't wait to find a quiet place to try it out. After leaving the service area on the second floor, Link went straight to the bar on the third floor. The bar was a place for the members to relax. In order to ensure privacy, it was decorated with many small cubicles. The cubicles used special soundproof technology, signal shielding, and heart flow interference to ensure their safety from three aspects physics, technology, and superpower. They were connected to each other without leaking privacy. The Platinum Hotel had put in a lot of effort to protect the privacy of its members. As long as they didn't fight in the hotel, they wouldn't pay attention to the members' behavior. 
This was also the reason why killers and bounty hunters had been so eager for so many years. In this line of work, they were always on tenterhooks, and it could be said that it was their greatest wish to have a place where they could put down all their disguises and defenses. Please give me a private room, thank you. Soon, the staff member brought Link to the cubicle. The design of the cubicles was very simple. They were all made of yellow wood, and there was only a half-high curtain at the door. Under the premise of ensuring safety, he tried his best to create an elegant and quiet atmosphere. After the staff left, Link opened the box and took out the gold necklace. The main purpose of coming to Platinum Hotel today was to spend gold coins. He never expected to see jewelry with the same design as the Zerg nest here. The cold feeling of the gold passed through his palm and into his body. However, neither the system nor Link had any reaction. The necklace lay quietly in his palm. That shouldn't be the case. Why isn't there any reaction? Link furrowed his brows, wondering if the necklace was just for show. Then, Lin Kei calmed down and thought about it. It seemed like the system was activated when his blood fused with the golden bracelet. He took out a sharp dagger and made a small cut on his finger. He then dripped the blood on the gold necklace, and the death beetles and scarabs on the necklace came to life. The gold cracked and crumbled, turning into a ball of gold residue. Meanwhile, the death beetle and sacred beetle disappeared from his hand. Link raised his arms. The tattoos on his arms had not changed. Just as Link was feeling suspicious, a melodious notification came from the system. You have obtained the Zerg Hive, incomplete. Arachnid Hive, incomplete, binding successful. The synthesis interface is expanding, please wait. I've succeeded. Link's eyes were filled with joy. Last time it was activated, this time it was expanded. He was really looking forward to the new functions that would be expanded. Soon, new changes appeared on the synthesis interface. Under the original synthesis formula, a new synthesis formula was added. One creature plus material equals creature. Two creature plus material plus material equals creature. Originally, he could only add one set of ingredients. Now, he could add two sets. Link was overjoyed. The newly synthesized creature would have some of the characteristics of the material. With the addition of these two materials, the pet would gain stronger and more complex abilities. In other words, Lin K would be able to create stronger and more complicated pets in the future. It was to the extent that Link was itching to synthesize something. Just as Link was about to exit the system, he suddenly noticed that the missions section was glowing with a golden light. This was the prompt of an unread mission he had received when he was browsing the system. At a new mission. Link immediately went to the missions section. A mission appeared on the interface. You have triggered the S-rank mission heart of the swarm. Establishing mission hint, before the Zerg Queen is sealed, spread the Zerg's divine weapon, the Hive, to all parts of the universe. Only by finding all the fragments of the divine artifact could the Empress come again. Every time you find a fragment of a divine artifact, your ability will also improve accordingly. Current progress, 5%. 10% stage reward, 1000000 experience points 50 potential points unlocking talent swarm commander, 20% of the stage reward will be unlocked upon completion. Mission completion reward. Unlock the Cosmic Disaster version and receive the title of Zerg Emperor. Link was dumbstruck after reading it. S rank mission. He knew that the Hive Divine Weapon was very powerful, but he had only obtained a fragment when he had escaped, so he didn't think much about it. However, after obtaining the fragment today, the compatibility between the two had grown even stronger. This allowed Link to directly activate a major main mission in the game universe. After looking at the rewards, Link was defeated by the inhumanity of the S-level mission. It was only a 10% reward, but it was more than the main mission on Wasteland. As expected of an S-class, he was very generous. The 1 million experience points and 50 potential points were not attractive to Link. Instead, 
it was the talent bug commander that attracted his attention. Talent was the most difficult thing to improve in the attribute panel. In version 1.0 Saint's Descent, the number of NPCs with talent on the three novice planets was less than 10. Talents were also known as main character template by players. NPCs with talents played a pivotal role in the progress of the story of the entire game. To these NPCs, a small planet was not their stage. What restricted them was only the preliminary settings of the mainframe. This was the effect of talent. It was so strong that it almost ignored the growth of versions. With talent, these NPCs would be the most brilliant existences in the universe, regardless of their background. It was also because of their unparalleled abilities and development prospects that these NPCs had a strong tendency to correct mistakes. This allowed the entire plot of fate to develop under the control of the mainframe. But now, Link only needed to complete 10% of the mission to receive a talent. This kind of stimulation was no less than obtaining a divine artifact fragment. I can't imagine how powerful the rewards for the later stages will be if there's such a reward for 10%. Just as Link was immersed in his joy, the treasure-hunting mouse jumped out of his pocket and onto his shoulder. It rubbed Link's face with its two little paws and said something. Chapter 47 Danger Befalls Us Again Link only glanced at the reward briefly, but he caught the key point. First, he had to gather a complete Zerg hive to unlock the Cosmic Disaster version. Link tried to recall. In his previous life, when Heart of the Swarm version 6.0 was released, Paul the Emperor became the well-deserved male lead. In other words, Paul the Emperor did not gather all the Zerg nests. The second was the title of Bug Emperor, although he didn't know what use it had. However, when he thought about the Bug Empress that was sealed by the nine superpowers, he knew that the weight of the title Bug Emperor was definitely not light. As everyone knew, the Great Emperor had always suppressed the Empress, whether it was in position or status. Link pulled his attention away from the system. He saw the treasure-hunting mouse's meaty nose twitching non-stop. It was doing its best on his shoulder. Link suddenly realized. You said you smelled a familiar scent here. Link was surprised. This was the familiar smell of the Platinum Hotel. Who else could it be other than Fu? Could it be the painter John? The treasure hunting mouse gestured with its two small claws again. Not too far from us. The treasure seeking mouse nodded. Little treasure, is that the artist John who fought with me last night? Shaking its head, the treasure hunting mouse strode in an exaggerated manner with its hands on its hips. Then, it rubbed its hands and bent over with a flattering look which perfectly described the phrase being arrogant before becoming respectful. But Link was confused. Who else could the acquaintance in the Platinum Hotel be other than John? Link thought of a plan. He stuck his head out of the curtain and looked around. He didn't find any traces of surveillance. The security and privacy in the compartment of the Platinum Hotel were very strong. It could resist the invasion of various technologies or spiritual forces, but there was one thing that it did not do well, and that was the simplest infiltration protection ability. The design of the third floor bar had overlooked a problem. From the designer's point of view, the members who could enter the Platinum Hotel must be highly skilled assassins or bounty hunters, so it only prevented high-end and uncontrollable eavesdropping methods. They didn't do anything to the simple physical eavesdropping, because once someone approached, they could see the other party's figure through the half-high curtain. However, with the development of the Platinum Hotel, many models had changed. For example, members could bring non-members into the hotel and discuss things in detail in the bar on the third floor. Little treasure, it's all up to you now. Link tapped the treasure hunting mouse's head lightly. The treasure hunting mouse straightened its back and saluted with its small claws beside its head. All right you can go. Link placed the treasure hunting mouse on the sofa and used the beast's eye on Lil Bao to see who this familiar person was. The treasure hunting mouse jumped off the sofa and quickly approached the cubicle by following the smell. The small treasure hunting mouse walked along the corner of the wall, and soon it sneaked into the partition where the familiar smell was. 
From the treasure hunting mouse's perspective, Link saw a familiar, flamboyant red suit it was the second young master, Shaw. Why is he at the Platinum Hotel, who is he talking to? Link frowned. Although he didn't see his face, the flamboyant color of his suit was too eye-catching. Although Link had interrupted Third Brother's warning twice since yesterday, he knew what Shaw was like. He didn't have this guy's loyalty, so he was only pretending to submit. The reason Link had turned a blind eye to this was that he had hoped that he could bring out his backup plan and eliminate all future problems. However, Link never expected that this guy had the connections to enter the Platinum Hotel. Brother Yin, we'll be counting on you for the Jack Gang this time. It's also a good thing that Old Crane is willing to help. Otherwise, our Jack Gang would really have been taken over by that shameless scoundrel. Xiao Er spoke in a low voice, and the sour smell of his flattery could be smelled in the air. Stop. I'll say it again, this has nothing to do with Foster Father. Foster Father's meaning has already been made very clear. In the underworld of Shadow, the winner is the king and the loser is the bandit. If one's skills are inferior and the other party raided one's home, it's because one's skills are not good enough. If one dies, then so be it. Hu Yin picked up a cup of tea and slowly drank it. Xiao Er, who was sitting across from him, nodded repeatedly. That's right, old Crane and brother Yin are right. But, he he, Hu Yin's tone was very long, and he changed the topic. Jack will officially become my foster father's last disciple after the ceremony next month, and he will also be one of the thirteen tycoons of White Crane Hall. Although the ceremony hasn't started yet, Jack has kneeled down and offered tea to his foster father. He and his brothers have become sworn brothers. Jack died because he wasn't good enough. However, he is my foster father's new foster son, my brother, and one of the thirteen tycoons of White Crane Hall. How can we just watch him die in vain and let the murderer take control of the Jack gang? Xiao Er's face was filled with grief and anger. He clenched his fists and said with a red face, Right. We must make the murderer pay the price. By the way, Brother Yin, when are we taking action? Xiao Er asked urgently, Now, as long as I step into the Jack gang, I can't stand it for a moment. What's there to be impatient about? If you can't even endure this, how are you going to be the boss of the Jack gang in the future? Xiao Er's face lit up. Thank you, Brother Yin. This is just a small token of my appreciation. I hope Brother Yin doesn't mind. Then Link heard the sound of thumbs rubbing against coins from the treasure hunting mouse's ears. It seemed to be quite a lot. That's easy. I didn't recommend you because of this waste paper. The main reason is that after this mess, the talents of the Jack Gang have withered. That third brother is afraid of death and can hide in the dark to give ideas, but if he were to stand in the front stage, he would definitely be a coward. However, the Jack Gang is under the White Crane Hall, and they have control over the transportation of wild animals. It's not realistic to find another person in such a short time. We, the Thirteen Gangsters, have our own things to do and you are the only one who is familiar with the process and can take up this position. As for Foster Father, although he doesn't like you because you're sleazy, he still has to keep his private affairs clear. I'm sure it won't be a problem if I go talk to him about this. You can just wait to be the boss of the Jack Gang. Xiao Er was overjoyed and quickly nodded. Many thanks, Brother Yin. When I take control of the Jack Gang, I won't forget to show my filial respect to you. Brother Yin was smiling, very satisfied with Xiao Er. This kid was up to something. Then I won't pick a time. I'll send some people over later. You call that guy from the gang to the alley and say that there's something to discuss. When the time comes, I'll bring some people to kill this kid and avenge my thirteenth brother. All right. Don't worry, Brother Yin. I'll make sure it's done beautifully. Xiao Er was overjoyed. If he destroyed Link, he would be able to take the position of the leader of the Jack Gang today. Then, Brother Yin, when are we leaving? Bang! 
Bang! Hu Yin slammed the table, and his tone suddenly became cold, I already said I'll go later, what's the rush? Besides, why do I, Hu Yin, need to explain anything to you? Xiao Er suddenly lowered his head and quickly apologized, Brother Yin, I was just a little anxious and wanted to avenge Boss Jack. I didn't think too much at the moment. Please forgive me, Brother Yin. Xiao Er stood up and solemnly bowed. I'll wait for you outside and greet our brothers while I'm at it. Go. Link quickly called the treasure hunting mouse back. As soon as the treasure hunting mouse returned to Link's partition, Sha opened the curtain and came out. He could vaguely see a mouse's tail in the corner of his eye. Brother Yin, I think I saw a rat's tail? F asterisk CK off, you're probably still sleeping, right? There were rats in the Platinum Hotel? Even if there are rats in the White Crane Hall, it's impossible for them to be here. I'm sorry, Xiao Er quickly bowed and apologized. I must be seeing things. Brother Yin, I'll take my leave first. As he spoke, he quickly left. Hu Yin unfurled his fan and kept fanning himself. I just praised him for being capable. Now, he's really making me angry. The treasure hunting mouse's physical eavesdropping method was really impressive. Even Platinum Hotel probably did not expect such a simple and crude method of eavesdropping. Without any technical content, he directly entered the partition to eavesdrop. He actually directly hooked up with White Crane Hall this is going to be a bit difficult to deal with, we of you. Link furrowed his brows. He'd already prepared for a counterattack from Shaw and the others. However, he thought that it should be a few other forces of the same level in the vicinity and had excluded White Crane Hall from the start. This was because Link knew that the White Crane Hall, the leader of the Jack Gang, would not make a big fuss over a new boss. As long as the tributes were paid on time and the tasks assigned by the higher UPS were completed, no one would care who became the leader. However, Link never expected Jack to secretly acknowledge Old Crane as his foster father, and even join the 13 Gangsters of White Crane Hall. The 13 Gangsters of White Crane Hall, Link had heard of them in his previous life. No wonder Third Brother was in charge of the Jack Gang in my previous life. Jack didn't die in an accident. He went to the White Crane Hall to become one of the 13 Gangsters. Link clutched the piece of gold in his hand and sighed. This time, I really have to thank this gold necklace. If it wasn't for the fusion of the gold finger, Link wouldn't have come to the bar on the third floor. Naturally, he wouldn't have heard Hu Yin and Sha's plan. Link patted the treasure hunting mouse's head. You did a great job this time. He said. The treasure hunting mouse looked proud, as if it was saying, Look, who is the number one general under master? Now that he knew the other party's plan in advance, he had to make full preparations. Hu Yin was one of the thirteen tycoons of White Crane Hall, and his strength was only higher than Jack's. There were also Hu Yin's men and Xiao Er's dozen or so hardcore fighters. This battle was very grim. Lin Kei walked out of the bar and took the elevator up to the Platinum Hotel's bank on the fourth floor. Hello, I would like to retrieve the ID 4396. Sir, please come with me, please. ID 4396 was the code name on the mysterious key that Link had found on the female mutant killer. Link had seen this key countless times. When an assassin went out on a mission, they would store inconvenient items in the Platinum Hotel. Link was here to retrieve the stock left behind by the female mutant. Soon, the staff member brought Lin K to the storage room with the ID 4396. Link inserted it and turned the key. The door to the storage room opened. P.S. It's 520 today. Happy holiday, everyone. Then what did 520 mean? 5 meant the implementation of 5 things, the implementation of economic structure adjustment, the implementation of precise rewards, the implementation of social protection, the implementation of environmental management, the implementation of anti-corruption and promotion of integrity. 2 was 2 things. He wanted both gold and silver mountains, 
as well as green mountains and rivers. Zero was zero tolerance for illegal and criminal behavior. Chapter 48 The Underground Exchange Link entered the storage room and started collecting the items. The first was the cash on the shelf. Piles of wasteland money were neatly stacked together like a small pyramid, and there were probably more than 100,000. Other than money, there were also guns on the shelves. The female mutant was a fire elementalist, and her main attack skills were her own fire skills. As for the weapons, they were mainly small and portable, so most of them were pistols. Link scanned the five pistols one by one. The weapon's specifications entered his eyes through the system interface. A silenced Glock 17 pistol with a high magazine capacity and high firing rate, suitable for fire suppression and cover. The revolver had six bullets, which was just enough to fill up the bullets of misfortune. What Link needed now was a pistol with high damage output as his main means of attack. Based on the level of the enemies they had encountered so far, the Glock 17 pistol was no longer sufficient for combat. Lin Kei really wanted to fit all five guns into it. Unfortunately, the calibers of all five guns were different, and there was limited space for the magazine in the strap. After thinking for a while, Link finally chose the most powerful and most difficult to master Desert Eagle, modified. Desert Eagle, modified. Grade, green. Parameters, attack 30 40 comma 9 bullets in magazine, 357 magnum bullets, foldable red dot sight. Equipment requirements, strength 7 points, endurance 10 points. Effect bonus, agility 2. Accuracy with firearms plus 5%. With Link's current attributes, he could totally control the pistol thug. The high damage and the accuracy bonus from the red dot sight made the Desert Eagle, modified, the king of the guns that Link often used. The clean and slender silver gray spear body had a silky texture to it. The entire gun felt heavy in his hand. Link then took out his lightweight Glock 17 and compared it to the gun's weight. He realized that the Desert Eagle, modified, was indeed a large caliber hunting pistol. It was almost twice as heavy as a Glock. As expected, only a fierce man is worthy of playing with this gun. Then, Link loaded the four spare magazines into his holster. In addition to the nine bullets that came with the Desert Eagle, modified, he had a total of 45 bullets. As he continued to browse the shelves, Link stopped in front of a bottle with the words flammable and explosive dangerous item on it. There were five small vertical bottles on the shelf, each of which was 10 centimeters long and as thick as a finger. Link picked up the bottle and examined it. He saw the label on the back of the bottle highly concentrated liquid explosive. Link couldn't help but shiver. If the female mutant had worn this in the alley today, Link would not have won so easily. He was an elementalist who was good at playing with fire. Using a high concentration of liquid explosives to trigger a second explosion, the lethality and deterrence of the explosion were not as simple as 1 plus 1 equals 2. Without hesitation, Link loaded the five high concentration liquid explosives into the holster. He would definitely need them when he returned to the Jack Gang to deal with the White Crane Hall. You have received the Desert Eagle, modified. High Concentration Liquid Explosives X5 Other than that, there was nothing else on the shelf. Little treasure, come here. I want to do an experiment. Link had an idea and wanted to try it out. The treasure hunting mouse stuck its head out of its pocket and suddenly had a bad feeling. Lin K entered the system's synthesize interface and selected the three latest synthesis formulas. Treasure hunting mouse, green plus high concentration liquid explosive, light green, plus ferrotumens shroud, dark green, equals success rate 35%. Link was a little depressed. It seemed that he could only try other combinations. He had thought that by combining these three high quality elements together, he could synthesize even more powerful creatures. He did not expect that they would conflict and the success rate was only a pitiful 35%. All right, you can go in and rest. The treasure hunting mouse returned to its pocket in a daze. Although it didn't know what boss was doing just now, 
it instinctively felt that it had escaped a disaster. It curled up its small body and closed its eyes to rest. Link put all the cash into his bag and closed the storage room door. Now that he had the key, this place would be his storage room from now on. The Platinum Hotel's bank deposit area allowed one to deposit and withdraw cash directly. Lin K deposited all the cash into his own bank card. A short while later, he received a text message on his phone. Your bank card ending with 2,334 has 156,000 wasteland coins deposited into it at 14.02 on April 18. Your current balance is 157,550 wasteland coins. Then, Link returned to the first floor and walked to Fu, who was waiting obediently in the rest area. Fu, now give me the head. Right, boss, I have something to tell you. When I was resting here just now, I actually saw Xiao Er. Did he see you? Fu scratched his head and said, I was sitting with my back against the sofa. I only recognized him when I heard him cursing. Didn't he already submit to boss? I was going to greet him, but he walked straight out of the hotel, so he didn't hear me. Link heaved a sigh of relief. It was a good thing that Xiao Er did not see Fu. Otherwise, the battle near the Jack Gang would have been moved to the entrance of the underground black market. Link patted Fu's shoulder. Fu's innate nine points of luck were indeed useful. He had stood up without being noticed by Xiao Er. Wait here for a while, I'm going to hand in another mission. Lin Kei took the elevator to the Platinum Hotel's basement with the head in his hand. If they had to choose a floor that could best represent the Platinum Hotel's characteristics, it would definitely be the basement. This was because this was the place where Platinum Hotel's bounty missions were received. Every day, hundreds of commissions would be generated here and sent to all Platinum Hotel branches in the northern region through the Internet. As soon as Link entered the basement, he saw a busy scene comparable to a stock exchange. Countless operators wearing headphones were standing in front of their old computers, operating them. There were all sorts of masked assassins and bounty hunters in the exchange. They were either handing in their missions or browsing through the latest orders. The entire exchange was filled with one word busy. Lin Kei picked up the half mask at the entrance of the underground trading house and put it on. This was the rule of the underground exchange. No one was allowed to show their true faces and they had to hide their faces. On the top of the wall of the underground exchange, there was a large square screen that was similar to the one in the center of the underground black market. The big screen showed the top 10 bounties and the top 10 assassins. Link glanced at the bounty list. The top 10 were basically all famous big shots on the wasteland planet. In the A rank mission The Revenge of the Mandala, 5 out of 7 people were on the list. Augustine Frank, the supreme commander of the Freedom Federation's Farnight, ranked first with a bounty of 13 million. Next was the person in power in Shandu, Jean Alonso, who followed closely with a reward of 10 million. If I don't count the reward of the A-level mission itself, I can get a bounty of 40 million wasteland coins just by killing five people on the list. Link then glanced at the assassin ranking list. First place, Shining, 9.77 million points. Second place, Nightmare, 6.78 million points. Third place, Duke, 4.98 million points. The top three were all famous killers after the game's open beta. The points on the assassin ranking were also easy to understand. The reward would be accumulated in the form of the same points when a mission was successfully completed in the Platinum Hotel. For example, the first place Shining had 9.77 million points which meant that he had already completed a bounty mission worth 9.77 million points through the Platinum Hotel's underground exchange. The Shining, a powerful psychic mutant, good at telepathy, proficient in close combat, assassination, and fighting. Using his strong psychic ability, he can teleport to any place he has seen. So far, he has completed two of the top ten missions on the bounty list and became the strongest assassin in active service. Nightmare was a mysterious assassin who was proficient in dreams. 
can sneak into the other person's dream at night. Anyone who was killed in the dream world would also die in reality due to brain death. Duke, a powerful technology-based bounty hunter, and a mechanic. With all sorts of advanced weapons and equipment, their powerful mechanical weapons could even face an entire army without losing. Lin K carried the female mutated human's head to an empty trading counter. Help me scan the identity of this female assassin and all the bounty missions related to her. The staff at the trading counter was used to it. He opened the cloth bag and held his head in front of the scanning device. Activating the device, a laser shot out from the prism metal strip, scanning the human head from top to bottom. Soon, a 3D model of the entire head appeared on the screen. After data comparison and screening, as well as a quick blood DNA test, the identity of the person was locked. The assassin's codename is Miss Hottie. He has a total of three bounties, a total of 30,000 wasteland coins. Do you want to submit the mission? Transfer all the money to your card. Link handed over the bank card, and the 30,000 wasteland coins reward was transferred to his account. Killers and bounty hunters carry out missions to obtain rewards. However, at the same time, assassins and bounty hunters would also become the targets of bounty hunting because of various disputes. It could be said that the rise of an assassin's reputation was definitely accompanied by the rise of the bounty list and the assassin list. The more bounty missions they could complete, the more hatred they could attract. Lin Kei withdrew all of Miss Hot Pot's bounty, and the amount in his bank card was close to the 200,000 mark. Before he left the exchange, Link searched for his information on the self-service equipment. On the interface, there was a 30,000 yuan bounty from the Wasteland Gang, asking for the capture of living people. Oh, it's a public commission. It seems that the Wasteland Gang is determined to capture me. There were all kinds of bounty missions, such as killing people, capturing living people, sneaking in to steal secrets, sparring partners, and so on. But missions usually only had two forms. One was to disclose the client, and the other was to be anonymous. There were only two ways to choose to disclose the client's identity, to show their great power and to endorse the credibility of the bounty mission, or they were confident in their own strength and not afraid of revenge. Link returned to the first floor of the Platinum Hotel. After giving Thomas a look and a slight nod, he left the Platinum Hotel with Afu. This trip to the Platinum Hotel had been fruitful. What Link needed to do now was to return to the Jack Gang and make preparations in advance to break the trap set up by Shaw and White Crane Hall. Yo, did you guys hear, the Jack Gang has gone through a big change. What happened, tell me? Recently, the peace in the Sand City has been abnormal. Finally, there's some news. Jack, he's dead. What? He's dead? Didn't he come to the underground black market the day before yesterday? Chapter 49 The battle starts at the start. I heard that the outsiders who set up the law a few days ago directly killed their way to the base camp and wiped out the entire Jack gang. The surrounding merchants were all shocked. Jack's strength isn't weak either. He actually got wiped out by one person. You guys were talking about the Jack gang, how could you leave me out? Link watched as the old man in a sweatshirt and flip-flops squeezed into the conversation with a small folding stool in one hand and a small fan in the other. Link's eyes widened in shock. Wasn't this old man the one who set up a Dragon Gate formation in the subway station and was sure that Link was the one who transformed the Wasteland Gang's underground laboratory? This matter, ah, has to start from the thug who died at the entrance of the underground black market two days ago. On the second night, the thugs at the gate were once again dealt with at the speed of light. In a fit of anger, Jack arranged for people to search the slums, and finally found the Jack Gang's Will-O-Wisp car in a small hotel. The battle at the hotel was really exciting. With a shotgun and a pistol, Guo Zhonglong killed three people and ten of the Jack Gang's hatchet men died on the spot. After that, the young man couldn't take it anymore. He gritted his teeth and stomped his feet directly killing his way to the Jack Gang's Ching Ching. This battle was quite exciting. Jack's fist technique is exquisite, 
but to dare to challenge Jack's dragon alone at night, that's also a shocking courage. The two men's fists met, and each of them retreated three feet before they could stop staggering. Guo Zhonglong gritted his teeth and used the last of his strength to shatter Jack's heart with a punch. The boss of the Jack gang was dead. The rest of the people were all intimidated by the courage of the dragon crossing the river and finally chose to submit. The surroundings were silent as the people inside and outside were listening to the old man's endless speech. After the story was finished, the old man sat on a small folding stool and fanned himself proudly. He felt very good when he felt the awe and respect from the people around him. Sigh, that's not right. Old man, you didn't even watch it live. So how do you know the details so clearly? Is there a problem? The old man held his head high and puffed out his chest, looking quite proud. I'm sorry, this old man was there. Link held back his laughter as he watched the old man act cool. At this moment, a frivolous voice suddenly came from outside the crowd, F asterisk CK, why didn't I know that there was an outsider in the Jack gang? The crowd gradually opened up a path and Xiao Er, who was wearing a bright red suit, walked into the crowd with his hatchet men. When the old man, who had been bragging just a moment ago, saw Xiao Er, the bright expression on his face suddenly seemed to freeze. Who didn't know that the man in a flamboyant red suit was the second in command of the Jack gang, Sha? Now that he had been caught red-handed bragging, the scene was as awkward as it could get. Link furrowed his brows at this. He didn't expect to run into Sha. He immediately turned and left with Fu. But just as the two of them turned around, Xiao Er's strange voice came from behind them. Oh, Boss Link, you're here too. Link stopped in his tracks. The last thing he wanted to happen had happened. Link turned around, his lips curling into a smile. I heard from Third Brother that you went out early in the morning. So you were in the underground black market. The old man on the side thought he was going to be in trouble, but he was stunned when he heard what Xiao Er said. The crowd opened up a path. Although the conversation between the two of them was brotherly and respectful, there was a sense of gunpowder in their words. There was a show to watch. The old man was even more stunned. He stared at Link and sized him up. He would never have thought that the handsome young man in front of him was the new boss, Link, who he had said was better than Jack. Her temperament, charm and strength were all top-notch, a dragon among men. You killed Jack, and now you are forcing us to respect you. I'm going to take revenge for Jack today. As soon as Shaw opened his mouth, he immediately used the flag of revenge for Jack no matter how arrogant and despotic he was usually. His words now held a sense of righteousness. Link had expected this to happen, but he did not expect it to happen in the underground black market. The surrounding merchants had already dispersed. Only the old man's hands and feet were twitching unconsciously at this moment, and he kept admonishing, Let's talk this out, don't fight here. You should know the rules of the underground black market. Last night, when you were all smiles and begging me to spare your dog life, you didn't have this much confidence. What's wrong? Did your confidence come back after you made connections with the people of White Crane Hall today? Link was unperturbed. Since they had already fallen out, there was no need to hide it. Hearing the name of White Crane Hall, the surrounding people all took a few steps back. At the same time, it was accompanied by a series of whispers. Oh my! Now that second brother Xiao has brought White Crane Hall with him, it seems that the new Link can't hold on to his position any longer. Didn't they say that White Crane Hall doesn't care about the conflicts between small gangs? Why are they interfering now? There's a rumor that Jack has made connections with White Crane Hall and is going to become one of the 13 gangsters under Old Crane. Jack was killed before the official announcement was made. Old Crane would definitely be upset. However, the word has already been spread, so we can only let the younger generation come out to solve it. So, if the 13 tycoons of White Crane Hall attack him, Link will definitely die. 
that's for sure the thirteen gangsters are like killing gods they're all true masters who lived in the slums and were accepted by old crane as his disciples link might have killed jack but he probably has no chance of winning against the thirteen gangsters tisk 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 i wanted to see the river dragon turn the clouds and rain but it seems like that's not going to happen the crowd murmured among themselves. They had already sentenced Link to death. Although the discussion was soft, it was still clear in this atmosphere. Afu was a little flustered when she heard what the people around her were saying. However, seeing that their boss was confronting the traitor, they couldn't say anything to lower their morale. When Shaw heard Link mention White Crane Hall so casually, his impudent expression froze. But this shock only lasted for a few seconds, and then a smile appeared on Shaw's face. So what if you know? I've already made an agreement with the White Crane Hall. The thirteen tycoons will take action, and you'll die even if you have ten lives. Oh? You seem to have forgotten about last night's carnage wine and the oath-breaking vow. Bah! What bullshit is this bloody wine and swearing an oath? What era are we in now? Who still believes in this? I'm telling you, Shaw said, pointing at Link. Yesterday's fake obedience was just a temporary measure. I was planning to ambush you when I returned to the Jack Gang, but now you won't be able to live long enough to return. If you want to blame someone, blame your servant for being too stupid. He actually opened his mouth and called my name. That's when I realized that you were in the Platinum Hotel. Xiao Er's face returned to its usual haughty expression. Link had no way of escaping now. Fu's face turned pale, and his lips trembled. He had thought that Xiao Er had already submitted to his boss, but he didn't expect this guy to be a two-faced villain. He also didn't expect this guy to really hear his voice, but pretend not to. Link was calm and his expression did not change at all. So you think you'll win with Hu Yin? Shaw's expression froze again. His heart skipped a beat. He could not figure out how Link knew about him and Hu Yin. A moment later, realization dawned on Xiao Er. Link must have seen him enter the Platinum Hotel with Hu Yin. Give up. In front of absolute power, your little tricks are useless. With his hands on his chest, Xiao Er circled around Link and sneered, If you have the ability then hide in the underground black market for the rest of your life and never go out. Perhaps Ying Luo, you didn't intend to leave the underground black market this time. Are you done? Link's expression remained unchanged. He only had a faint smile on his face and was unmoved. You. Xiao Er was so angry that he was speechless. Yesterday, he had been so submissive in front of Link, like a pug. She wanted to take this opportunity to get back at him and embarrass him before he died, but Link was completely unmoved. Fu, let's go. Link called for Afu to leave. Seeing Link's tall and straight figure leave, Sha immediately took out his phone and made a call. Brother Yin, I found Link and his servant in the underground black market. Only the two of them. This is a good chance for us to strike. Also, we don't know what happened to Link, but he's recovered overnight. Even if he turns into something, he won't be able to do anything. Come with me and give him a surprise outside the black market. A cruel smile appeared on Xiao Er's face. He seemed to have already seen the position of the Jack Gang's boss waving at him. Let's go, we'll meet up with the White Crane Hall. Xiao Er said as he left with his men. The onlookers exchanged glances. Everyone thought that Link was dead for sure this time. Boss, what should we do now? Fu said nervously. He had never thought that the situation would turn out like this. Don't panic, everything is under control. Indeed, Link wasn't too worried. Although Shaw had said that the thirteen tycoons would surround him, Hu Yin should be the only one. Otherwise, Shaw wouldn't have been so eager to announce his loyalty and bribe him. In this case, the only one they had to deal with was Hu Yin, and the others were just small fries. Fu, stay in the underground black market and don't go out. I'll come back to find you after I'm done. 
But boss, you. Link raised a hand and interrupted him. I can't do much with you around. You can stay in the underground black market. No one will dare to touch you here. Then, boss, you must be careful. Link was not in a hurry to leave. Instead, he went straight to Dave's watch shop. Dave, are you interested in doing a business about basic chips? Dave suddenly raised his head and widened his eyes. He was stunned for a moment. I'll be happy to. But we need to find a quiet and safe place to talk business, Ying Luo. An hour later, Link arrived at the electric ladder leading to the underground black market. Little treasure, it's your turn. The treasure hunting mouse jumped out of Link's pocket and obediently entered the old elevator. Link used the beast's eye on the treasure hunting mouse. The elevator creaked as it rose and opened at the top. The treasure hunting mouse stood up to take a look and sniffed. A strong smell of blood rushed into its nose, and it also smelled the scent of many people. Little treasure carefully crawled out of the elevator and stuck his head out. Then, Link gasped as he saw an unexpected scene. The ground of the alley was covered with corpses, and the armbands of these corpses were all embroidered with a white crane. They were all from White Crane Hall. But now, they're all dead, Ying Luo. 50 Chapter 50, A Cloud of Doubt Link was confused. He didn't let the treasure hunting mouse explore further. Instead, he told Xiao Baio to find cover and hide. Link pressed the elevator button, and the creaking sound of the old elevator could be heard from the gap between the sliding doors of the iron fence. Opening the sliding door and entering the elevator, Link immediately took out his Glock and Desert Eagle. Link's brows furrowed. He'd thought that there would be a lot of people outside, or that there would be an ambush at the entrance of the alley. However, he had not expected to see so many corpses lying on the ground. The people of White Crane Hall were indeed waiting outside, but they were all dead. Who did this? Lin Kei's thoughts were in a mess. When he heard the creaking sound of the old elevator, he was even more confused. The situation in Shandul was rather complicated. It could be said to be the most chaotic of the three special cities of the Freedom Federation. Thus, Link had been very careful ever since he came to the Sand Capital. He tried his best to minimize the impact as much as possible, afraid that he would provoke some terrifying existence before he grew stronger. The result Everyone already knew. He could have easily dealt with the Jack Gang at level 20 in his previous life. If he could attract legendary NPCs, and even the White Crane Hall, a major power in the slums, was involved, who could link reason with? Bada. With the crisp sound of a metal buckle, the old elevator arrived on the ground. Link looked through the iron gate and immediately smelled the strong scent of blood. Eye of the Beast could only share the vision of the beast, and not other senses. Now that Lin Kei had reached the surface, he could smell the strong stench of blood even before he stepped out of the elevator. His heart sank. If this was a trap set up by White Crane Hall to lure him out, then the investment was simply too great and too realistic. Link walked out of the elevator with his gun in both hands. The treasure hunting mouse immediately scurried to Link's feet and ran into his pocket only showing its little head. Squeak! The treasure hunting mouse pointed at the alley in front of them with its four little fingers. Little treasure, hide well and don't come out. The treasure hunting mouse squeezed its head into the pocket and curled up obediently. Link understood what the treasure hunting mouse meant. There were four more people in the alley. He walked to the corpse and used his gun to poke at it. To his surprise, he saw a bloody wound on the corpse's neck. The wound was clean, and there was no roughness on the incision. It should have been cut open by a sharp short blade or something. Next was the broken throat and the esophagus that was cut inside. Under the blood red color, all of them were inverted. The blood did not show any signs of congealing, and was even flowing along his neck. It seemed that it had happened just now. Link frowned and checked the other corpses. All of them had their arteries, esophagus, and windpipe exposed, as if they had exploded. The wounds were smooth and flat. 
only a lurker who was proficient in short blades could cause such a wound. Different from grandmasters of combat, lurkers were good at killing in one strike from the dark. They focused on the flaws and vital points of the opponent, and their attacks were swift and decisive. These thugs of White Crane Hall were all killed in a flash in shock. Their throats were clenched tightly as their skin was pierced by sharp weapons. What really killed them was the chi force attached to the dagger. It was as thin as paper, but it could cut through iron and gold, directly cutting off the necks of the thugs in front of them. Who is it? Sweat started to form on Link's palm. With a rough glance, there were about twenty bodies on the ground. Just as Link was about to walk around the corpse, he suddenly saw a corpse in completely different clothes. There was even a fan hanging from the back of his neck. Link looked at him and recognized him as one of the thirteen tycoons of White Crane Hall who had plotted the ambush with Xiao Er in the Platinum Hotel Hu Yin. Although Link couldn't see Hu Yin's face from the treasure hunting mouse's perspective, he could clearly see what he was wearing and the fan he was using. Even Hu Yin, one of the thirteen tycoons, is dead? Link's heart sank. He had a bad feeling. Squeak. Just as Link was about to check on Hu Yin's wound, the treasure hunting mouse in his pocket suddenly let out a series of urgent cries. Link immediately retreated. The next second, a black shadow appeared in front of Link and followed closely behind. He was wearing a black suit and a pair of sunglasses. He had no expression on his face, as if everyone owed him money. The dagger glinted coldly as it drew AZ from the back of his waist. In the blink of an eye, it appeared in front of his eyes and was heading for his neck. In his haste, Link only had the Desert Eagle, modified, to point at the man in black. The muzzle of the gun burst into flames and the roar of a wild beast sounded. Bang bang bang! Link's arm had to withstand the huge recoil of the Desert Eagle with each bullet. As the bullet hit the opponent, the muzzle was also shifted. Link gritted his teeth. His current attributes barely met the requirements for using the Desert Eagle. Even if he had 15 endurance, it would still be difficult to overcome the Desert Eagle's recoil. After all, in his previous life, he could only use a weapon at level 20. Now that he was holding it at level 10, it was naturally a little difficult. However, Link endured the huge recoil and fired four bullets in a row before the muzzle completely tilted. You have used Desert Eagle? modified, to hit the enemy, causing 20 points of damage, bulletproof vest 7 points reduced, resistance 6 points reduced. You have used Desert Eagle, modified, and hit the enemy, causing 19 points of damage, bulletproof vest 8 points, resistance 6 points. Just as Link was about to fire another shot, the dagger appeared in front of him. Link suddenly raised his other arm. You lost your arm. The man in black had a smile on his face as if he could already see Link's arm being cut off. Ding! Ding! The dagger fell and stabbed into a piece of metal, causing sparks to fly. Link was sent flying by the huge force, but the Desert Eagle didn't stop in the air. While it could still see the enemy, it emptied the remaining five bullets in its magazine. Pa! All four bullets missed, but one of them hit the man in black's knee and a stream of blood shot out from the back of his knee. The man in black knelt down on one knee and covered his knee with one hand. You have used Desert Eagle, modified, and hit the enemy's weak point, causing 78 damage, 8 points reduced by bulletproof vest and 6 points reduced by resistance. It also has speed reduction effect. Link fell heavily to the ground. At the same time, he felt his right arm go numb as if it had been electrocuted. Link looked at the metal shield on his right arm. A dent had appeared where the dagger had hit. He couldn't help but gasp. Fortunately, I asked Dave to change the retractable arm shield before I came out. Otherwise, half of my right arm would have been dislocated by the knife just now. In his previous life, all of Link's zealot chips were sold in Dave's watch shop. After collecting the full set of five basic chips for Dave, he could choose to ask for money, but there was also a hidden option to exchange for a piece of defensive equipment from Dave, a green quality arm shield. 
Link had originally planned to use this arm shield to defend against the concentrated fire of White Crane Hall. He didn't expect that he would be able to block the mysterious attack of the man in black. The right sleeve of his suit was already ragged, revealing the original appearance of the folding arm shield. Buzz! There was the sound of metal folding, and the arm shield returned to his arm. Link's forearm was completely covered by the metal arm guard, making him look like a futuristic sci-fi. On Link's little finger, he wore a silver ring that was connected to the metal arm guard by a thin silver wire. As soon as Link hooked his little finger, the metal arm guard would open up and form a shield that was half a meter tall. Who are you? The first thing Link did when he got up was to reload the Desert Eagle. At the same time, he cast a detect on the man in black. Due to the level difference between you and the target, the following information has been obtained. Name, unknown. Race, human. Level, LV15+, elite. Occupation, pugilist rogue. HP, 1141-1300. Energy, 180-300. Attributes, agility 30, others unknown. Skill, ambush LVL2, other unknown. Equipment, Throat Cutter, Blue. Specialty, Unknown. Evaluation, Be careful of the dagger in his hand. It was actually a level 15 elite. Link's back was drenched in cold sweat. The treasure hunting mouse had said that it had sensed the auras of four people, but only Tao Wu had appeared. All 30 odd members of White Crane Hall had their throats slit. It was unrealistic for a level 15 elite to fight against Hu Yin and so many hatchet men and kill them in a flash while they were still in shock. Link's heart sank. A situation worse than White Crane Hall had arrived. He was going to face four level 15 plus, elite, players at the same time. Tap 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 tap. Suddenly, the sound of high heels came from outside the alley. A woman in black professional attire and black sunglasses appeared. The way she dressed reminded Link of a female insurance agent. Link cast a detection spell on the man as well. As they had not fought yet, the system only detected that the other party was also a level 15 elite. Things were getting closer and closer to Link's analysis. He just didn't know what kind of combat style and system the new woman had. It seems that you still need to practice your assassination skills. The woman's voice was teasing. The black-clothed stalker said with a regretful tone, there seems to be a living thing on his body that can sense my existence. The woman walked to the man in black, squatted down, rolled up her sleeves, and put her white arm to the man's mouth. The man in black didn't say anything. He opened his mouth and bit the woman's arm, and his throat began to suck greedily. At the same time, the blood on his knees and stomach froze, and he slowly stood up. Blood healers, Link frowned. Link then used his mind to communicate with the treasure hunting mouse. Little treasure, help me sense the location of the remaining two people. At the same time, on the roof of a building not far from the exit of the underground black market, two people were admiring the battle. Did you see anything? Test subject number 777 has an innate talent for combat. You can actually sense A's existence at the first moment. Didn't you already see the answer from Miss Hottie? Why do you have to say it again? I hope we can see the answer we want in this battle. Which side do you think will win this battle? If that ability really exists, I think test subject 777 might win the final victory. You're joking? Right? You can't even beat one with four.